Live from the Toad Hop Network Studios in Hollywood. This, this is the ToadHopNetwork.com. A place of our own without a lot of parents bearing down our backs. Radio worth watching. And here we go. You like that I started with that again? <laughs> Hey, is this it? This is this is the it? new this intro music? I don't know. I liked it. Last week it worked out well. I think <laughs> it's a different version than the YouTube channel. It's the Schmozno Podcast, Christian Harloff. And I am Mark Allison. Apparently we're playing an 8-bit Nintendo game. I love it. Start off the show. It sounds good. It I sounds mean, great. It's getting me excited, much like Excite Bike did back when I was a, a mere lad, an 8-year-old. Yeah, it does feel like that. All right, guys, it's the Schmozno Podcast, and we're, we have a really fun show tonight. It's going to be, we're, yes, we're going to talk about Pixar movies. That'll be a little later. We have a lot of movie news and and by the way, someone is returning that we didn't see last week to hear her Man of Steel. You missed the Man of Steel war. I know. Um, <laughs> and that is Tiffany Smith. What's up, Tiff? Hey, guys. I'm sorry I missed last week. I was bummed. I tried to call in. I oh, was in New York. it was a York. madhouse last yeah, week. Yeah, I was. I, you were in some podunk town, right? I was in Manhattan right. having Never a boring it. time going it. on tours of Marvel and seeing top secret stuff. Wow. So I was like, can I take a photo of this? No. Pro- can probably, I take a photo of this? Probably no. better okay. that you didn't call in then because you would have called from, again, there were a lot of people that you call in and where are you, Marvel? It's DC time! <laughs> so, uh, so you don't want to do that. Big uh, show tonight. Very yeah. exciting guest, too. Uh, a little bit later on at the 9 o'clock hour, our second hour of the show, we're going to have uh, our good buddy, uh, one of my best buds in comedy, Adam Ray yeah. from the new movie, The, the Heat. Heat. Yeah, which we just saw. Mm-hmm. We'll talk, and, and as well as Rylea Vanderbilt's going to be coming in as well. From Very team, soon she'll be Very here. soon from very, Team very Unicorn. Very, very soon. We're talking to her. She's going to be talking uh, Pixar movies with us, and yep. we will be talking. She's also going to talk. She'll join us after Ken does his news. Yep. So uh, without any further ado, there's a lot of stuff that happened, and Mark Riley, our editor-in-chief on Schmozno.com, has been posting a lot of stuff the last week, and, and that's one of the things we're going to do tonight, too, for Schmoville. We're going to have you guys a little, probably in like the 930 uh, half an hour. We're going to have you guys call in and tell us what you like about the website, what mm-hmm. you've been digging there, what uh, what you don't like, what you do like, just things that, what you know, it's been a month now, Mark. Yeah, it'll be like tech support. They can just yeah. call in and we'll, yeah. we'll kind of walk them through the process. Tell us what stories you love, what you don't love. Which writer do you want to fire? From yeah. Schmoesno.com. <laughs> Perfect. We'll tan them live on the air. All right, yeah, we, we'll do that. So we'll do that. Mean. Unless it's me, because I, so I posted one story. I posted the Jurassic Park story last week. And, uh, Didn't Mike, even put it in the slider. I, I'm public. I am wow. technically now published. Well done. And then the other thing that's going to happen tonight, which is, it was it was too fast. It was too soon. Just when I was starting to like The Kid. Too the, fast, too soon? Too fast, Is too that soon. a prequel to uh, Fast and Furious? Yeah, it is. And The Kid is leaving us. Our intern, The Kid, is leaving. He is his That Italian show. kid that hangs uh, out here? Yeah, he actually, he's actually an intern. No shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's, you've seen him before, right? Yeah. What's, yeah. Hey, I, I thought he worked at Buffalo Wild Wings, and he just like got no. attachment issues with his sir. And can no. I just say, Aww. he's only been here three weeks, but he actually came to one of my pro wrestling shows. None nice. of you have in two years. You've never anymore. invited us. Yeah, yeah. At you least ne- me. I have never been invited. You've never invited I have me. Never been Kenny, invited. I'm going to be you've totally honest invited? with you. Every time you invite me to a pro wrestling show, I think it's a joke. I thought you were... <laughs> I thought you were just like, oh, that's Kenny's sense of humor. Okay, buddy, see you next week. Can we also talk about the fact that he looks at Christian and goes, I've invited you. Ignore the fact that I said, you've never invited me. Well, <laughs> never mind. No, you never invited me. And, Johnny, and, and, of course, on the drums, as always, Johnny Ice. <laughs> Johnny Ice. <laughs> see, I threw him up. Johnny Ice. Wow. Um, so, again, guys, the kid's going to be leaving us. We'll talk to him a little later on, get some of his thoughts before he takes off. Random. JTI is here doing God knows what. And we will be talking to everybody. But first, Johnny Ice, play that music. I'm Ken Hapsack, and these are your Schmozno headlines brought to you by Magic Hat Brewing Company. There are great mysteries and questions in life, like is there a God, why are we here, and who buys Kesha albums? But above them all, the biggest question in the universe is will there actually be a Justice League movie? And now, according to Superman, we have learned that no, there will not be a Justice League movie, at least not now. In one of the only instances in recorded history that an actor's opinion mattered, Man of Steel star Henry Cavill told ABC News that he believes the Justice League project is far from happening, specifically pointing out that most of the DC characters that comprise the Justice League have godlike powers that make the movie hard to place in the, quote, real-world universe, real-world setting we're telling our story in, end quote. It goes on to insinuate that Warner Brothers will copy the Marvel formula of developing the characters individually in their own films before maybe putting, putting them in a big 
giant film. So everyone will have their own movies except for Aquaman, who will only have a podcast. (laughs) Speaking of gods, Will Smith will not be in the long rumored now happening sequel to Independence Day. Director Roland Emmerich has claimed that Smith is now too expensive and too big of a star to be in the sequel, due in theaters July 2015. In a related story, Bill Pullman has lowered his asking price to three six-packs of Keystone and a gift card to Kmart. So there's going to be a Taken 3. Clearly, Roland Emmerich is not directing it yes. because Liam Neeson is reported, yes. reportedly no set yes. to receive $20 million. $20 million to reprise his role as Mr. Taken. <laughs> Editors note his character's name is actually Brian Mills. No director or screenwriter is attached, so perhaps he'll just wing it, which would still be better than Taken 2. <laughs> Michael Bay's upcoming catastrophe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, has its shredder. (laughs) William Fitchner, who has a facial expression of a sexual misconduct suspect, signed on for the film about a month ago for an unknown part. He now has been confirmed as the Ninja Turtles' main foe. Fitcher joins the cast of Megan Fox as April O'Neil. Danny, I've been on more things than just Seinfeld, Woodburn as Splinter. And four guys waiting for their bartending shifts to end as the Turtles. (laughs) And finally, because why not, a Knight Rider movie is in the works. The LA Times is reporting that the Weinstein Company has hired Arrested Development and Wild Hogs writer Brad Copeland to help develop a film version of the popular 80s TV show, most likely in the vein of that yuck-yuck fest that was 21 Jump Street. The Times also reports that the show's star, David Hasselhoff, is, quote, making noise about being involved in the film. And by making noise, I mean drunkenly making out with a double western cheeseburger on the floor of a North Hollywood studio apartment directly behind Clown Liquor. <laughs> the film has no release date or hope. I'm Ken Absock, and those are your No Headlines, brought to you by Magic Hat Brewing Company. A lot well of good done. stuff from the Ken man. Now, Ken. Um, good yucks today, not, Ken. Good not, yucks. Not that I don't love looking at your face, but I'm going to kick yeah. you out of there. Absolutely. Uh, because we're going to bring in our first guest. Um, who is a lot better looking than you are. So <laughs> um, f- let, let us please introduce our lovely guest. Joining us from Teen Unicorn, Rylea Vanderbilt is here. Yay. Let's put some cans on Rylea and let's lovely. talk about some of the news here. Um, now, Ken, one of the other things that you didn't do was that I wanted to talk to you about. You, I can't believe you didn't mention the Jim Carrey story. Uh, no, is that, yeah. is that a news story or is that just that's, the dude's state of mind right now? That's where a big he's, story. That's a big that's story. A big story. Because, we'll get into that. Let's get into that okay. in a second because that's a big story we need to talk about. In but Ken's first, defense, that's a, hard, that's a hard story to make a funny one-liner about. I'm also a, a gun proponent, gun owner, so he can... Uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's going to be a really good comment. Yeah, Fine, Kenny. Go, I'll go to your pro wrestling show. Yeah. Just don't threaten me with your peace again. All right, violence face. We'll get Stop you back it. in here. All right, let's look. Can we talk to our guests, please, for a second? Hi, guys. Uh, hello, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us in Schmoville. Thanks for having me. Of course. And we first met on Tiffany's podcast. Yes. Uh, We've been doing a lot of podcasts. You sure have. The (laughs) Game of Thrones recap and review. I had both of you guys on. Yeah, looking forward to that coming back. Is that, ah, that's that show. Okay, we can talk about Game of Thrones. (laughs) Uh, Are you already championing to get booked on the next season of Game (laughs) of Thrones podcast? I'm actually kind of excited season's over just because I needed time to breathe. Breathe, Yeah, Yeah, it was just, it was really intense. That's how I feel about the show. Any other show I watch, I'm like, I want more and more and more. More, but then Game of Thrones, it's like, I need to digest all yeah. of this. And yeah, that's, that's a perfect segue because we need to digest Superman before we jump into Justice League. Mm. And that's exactly what... I'm pretty sure I shit out most of Superman last week. Oh, stop oh, it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, F yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah. You, wow. you, just, you, just, you just told a bad... You just told a you really... Dropped. You told a racist joke just then in a, in a crowd. That was bad. That was racist. bad. Racist? <laughs> you know when people go, oh, oh, not yeah. too soon, too yeah. soon. Way, way to follow it. Thank you, thank you. All right, anyway, so listen, the Justice League movie, okay? Yeah. This stupid thing that was said, though, by Henry um, Cavill. 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 Yeah. The yeah. thing that he said. British Superman. Well, he said that the, the real world situation. I mean, there's Zod and aliens and stuff <laughs> going around. How is that a real world situation? I I don't think it was. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he was maybe uh, commenting on. I, I'm no, just he, excited that. They he's ruined a talking. city, guys. Yeah, like, well, that's, but that's the whole... I, he had no lines in the movie, I know. and now he gets to talk in real life, and I'm happy about Preach that. Preach it, sister. But wait, but wait, but that's the thing, though. In in his quote, though, he said that he's not sure a Justice League movie can happen because the movie that he's doing, this Man of Steel, took place in, like, the real world situation. That was that was not... I mean, See, I feel was, like he... Didn't he say in the near future? He said in the near future. I have a feeling that everybody behind the scenes who was going to be the ones pulling the strings on a Justice League movie hate... 
when any actor does this. This is yeah. like what A Rod did with the Yankees this week when yeah. he tweets about how healthy he is, and the GM's like, just <laughs> shut the fuck up. See, I, like <laughs> nobody wants their actors to come. Just just show up, be our monkey in a costume, yep. and when you're off set, don't talk about this. Stuff. I think normally you're right, but I think this time this is a this was a studio spin. I think they told. Oh, them, I totally agree. Yeah, I think they just basically said, listen, just just tell them right now. We don't know. We don't know because right now we don't know. Yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out. So they he's he's the spokesperson right now. Mm-hmm. So they're gonna have him saying everything. He they his publicist gives them things to say. They're going to ask you about Justice League. Just yeah, say right now, true. it might that's not true. work. And honestly, I feel like however you felt about Man of Steel, everyone that I talked to came out loving him as yeah, Superman. Yeah, I loved absolutely. him. There's yeah. nothing bad about him. So him, I loved I his like potential have, as Superman. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I think that once he gets the, lines. the companies are like, okay, we can have him be kind of the mouthpiece of this and people aren't going to be pissed off if right. he's like, it's not going to happen yet. You're like, okay. Yeah, look, and I think I think it's going to be a great universe. I think eventually there will be a Justice League movie. I think Aquaman's podcast is going to be successful. Yeah, I My, would listen to that. I I would totally listen to that. It'd be hard to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it'd be yeah. a lot of like sound waves. Yeah. Uh, um, the problem I have is that is that we were waiting so long for Justice or for Superman, right? Yeah. Because Green Lantern didn't really work, and you're like, God, I just awful. I want that springboard for the Justice League, and now they finally have it. Man of Steel, whether you loved it or not, it's getting mostly positive reviews, mm-hmm. and it's doing really well at the box office. So this should be the time when everybody's high. High five and and being like yeah. yeah Justice League's coming out and they're still like Ugh. no because no because it's it's and I don't think it's that easy because again there's there's so much work they need to do because the question is look there's Marvels out there they set up all the characters well now DC either has to make one decision it, and that decision is either okay let's do the Justice League movie introduce all the new characters hope we cast well. Hope we cast yeah. a great new Batman. Hope we cast a, a, a Wonder Woman and then give them their movies or the opposite and do what Marvel did and set up all the movies first and then release Justice well, League. Well, I think with DC, too, uh, those are characters that are really hard to crack. I mean, yeah. because we've seen, like, a bad Green Lantern. They've tried to do Wonder Woman. You know, yeah. everything kind of falls apart because they're really tough characters to bring on screen, I think. And I, also, and I, I agree with that, but I also think that it's it's a matter of – the right executives making the right decisions and mm-hmm. making, you know... Which who, never happens. Some, so, I mean, it, it, did, it did in the case of, of Jeff... Yeah, but again, the, and this is why it, the whole big story with Jeff Robinoff leaving Warner Brothers is a big thing because he was the one that championed Nolan and giving yeah. him all the... Yeah. You, know, yeah. the you, don't get a lot, you don't get what he did. Trust him. Let him do the thing. There's too many kicks, cooks in the kitchen. Look what happened to the X-Men movies eventually. Yeah. yeah so anyway, I, let's... I, I'm, with, I'm with Riley, too. It did, like, DC has the two greatest superhero franchises of all time. Yeah. It's Superman and Batman. Yeah. After that, it's a bunch of D-leaguers, in my opinion, who don't necessarily do don't warrant not their own D-league. movie. No, exactly. And don't forget. Developmental league. Nobody gave a shit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's, that's what it is. You're right. You're right. Yeah, don't pick no, on Wonder Woman, my friend. All right. Listen, nobody, do nobody gave a shit except comic book fans about Iron Man before Iron Man came out. Nobody that's true. cared about Iron Man. Iron Man, and now Iron Man is one of the biggest well, superheroes here, in the this world. This is my thing that I said. I liked Man of Steel. I didn't love it. I will 100% say uh-huh. that. But I'm on your I page. went in because I feel like, which is great about comic book films, I went in hoping for a Batman Begins, like something that changed the game. I understand. You know? yeah. And so you go in with such high expectations after something like that and after Avengers, and it wasn't quite that for me. But I look at it and I say, okay, awesome. I have high expectations because we have had good films. And that's, and that's, what we and that's yeah, a good thing. All right. We got we to scoot on from this. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a Justice League podcast, which is good. <laughs> but we got to move on. Again, now, Ellis, this is one I want to know where you stand. Because I know you like Independence Day a lot more than I did yeah. the first one. So we're getting a sequel. Uh, Roland Emmerich is saying they're going to do it now. And probably White House Down will probably do pretty well. And they're going to give it to him. Now, Will Smith not coming back is... Disastrous, in my opinion, and it also Agreed. is what a dopey thing to say. Is like, oh, he paid him too much money. You're going to lose so much money for not yeah. having him in. Yeah, there. it's how much money is Will Smith possibly going to cost you? Because whatever 20, he costs 25. you, to, if he costs you thirty million dollars yeah. to it's be an in Independence yeah. Day, and then he's like, yeah. oh, and tack on another five million for my kid because he's having trouble getting lead parts these days. <laughs> then that movie is still going to make so much more money. Independence Day Two is going to make a lot of money, regardless. Yeah. Of, yeah. It could be us in the Independence Day Two movie, and it's going to yeah. make a lot of money. But if you put Will Smith in there, it's going to make so much more. So if you don't want him in your movie, if you want to go in a different direction, that's fine. But don't give me the lie about, oh, he's too expensive yeah. for this like billion dollar franchise. They're like throwing him under the bus. Do you, like yeah. they just yeah. decide, they're like, let's just throw he's Will just under really the bus He's just really greedy. Say, We're not going right. to yeah. Well, do you, yeah. think, do you think it also could be that maybe the studio doesn't have that much confidence in the franchise anymore? And they say you only have this amount of money. 
and you have to hit this. And one of the whoa, maybe we cut. Well, because because Jeff Goldblum is doing God knows what. He's I think I saw he's, him outside with the homeless guy. And he does a show every coaching. week or something. He right? does a show. Yeah, he does. He's actually you know he, Jeff Goldblum's great. I don't yeah. know, but uh, and and he's Harvey. So hot. That would be one it. of the dumbest studio decisions in history. Is if they decided that they don't need Will Smith or that the franchise. Look, the reason why Independence Day the first one worked so well is because Will Smith had that perfect combination mm-hmm. yeah. of Comedy, he was a leading man. Yeah. He could be an action hero. Yep. He also had charisma. Nobody else. That movie pulled that off. Without Will Smith in there, it's a stupid movie where yeah. Randy Quaid and a president are flying airplanes against aliens, and Will Smith gave it, he grounded it enough yeah. to okay. make it feel at least realistic enough to get through it. So, yeah. again, that's, that's 2015 <clears throat> that that movie's coming out, and I'll tell you what, 2015 is Is there anything shit. coming out that year? Holy shit, man. You have so much. Listen. Besides Star Wars mm-hmm. and Avengers Two and Independence Day, oh my god! Uh, and and then Riley, can you? I mean, there's just a ton more that we posted today. But another one that that you just announced today is coming out is the new Terminator film. Oh, wow. Terminator is it's is going to be an intense year, guys. It's going to be crazy, <laughs> really intense and, and for all us yeah, nerds. And the next Hunger Games, <laughs> the final Hunger Games comes out that yeah, year too. All, oh, all, right, all yeah, of that's too many. It's, it's too many. Much. You it's say much. that now, but you're gonna, as, I'm going to be so excited. But right. I feel like it's overwhelming oh, it's so, when you're like, like even this year, I'm like. Oh, Man of Steel. And now I'm like, ah, oh, Pacific Rim. Ah, oh, Lizzie. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you know what? I'm curious. Schmoville, for Schmoville listening right now, just tweet in at Schmoes Know what movie so far in 2015 that has been announced are you most excited for, mm-hmm. whether it be Star Wars or Avengers 2 or Terminator 2 or any of these movies, you know, tweet out and let us know. And I think even the third Spider-Man is coming out also that year. It's crazy. Get your movie so, passed now. Yeah, seriously. seriously. <laughs> so, all right, so the, Termi- the Terminator movie, this was announced today, and this is what kind of baffled me about it. The, Paramount is doing the movie this time around, and they said that they were going to do um, – they were going to announce this movie that Kenny threw me off with his with his postcard. I apologize. Um, <laughs> Asking you love letters. Yeah, he's yeah, just throwing people letter. under the bus. Just I'm like going to read Kenny. Kenny. I'm going to read no, Kenny's but, note right now. It par- says, "Hey Christian, did you like the news? Check box. Yeah, yes, no, no, maybe." That's exactly what it said. But no. So <laughs> meet ter- you behind the bleachers. Paramount. Paramount has said that you know they they were going to release this, and they said it's a reboot mm-hmm. now, a reboot, and they're going to do a new trilogy. A reboot of the original? Or That's they... what it just says. They're rebooting Terminator. So, yeah. what, Riley, what do you think that means? Do you think they're going to like just <sighs> recast Kyle Reese? What are they going to do? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know, man. That movie's so perfect the way it is. Yeah, I don't it's think it's very perfect. But you know, but, I mean, 2015. I mean, we've come so far since that the first movies come out. I bet they kind of stick with their original. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, Make you may you more. may have to push Judgment Day back a little bit. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like if, yeah. if they made another Back to the Future, they got 2015. They, I know, they kind right? of missed the board. Right. I know. Um, God, I love literally. those movies where you're like, oh, the time clock. Just yeah. Wait, wait. This is this is supposed to be happening now. <laughs> yeah. Where's my yeah. hoverboard? It's yeah. like old Sequest episodes when it's like 2013 <laughs> and they're. All underwater and they're like, the most fun one is the time is the time cop vision of 2004. That ain't uh, the 2004 I lived in. <laughs> no. I didn't have cars that you could tell them where to go. I, I was still waiting to see if Ross and Rachel got together. Oh my god! Um, but you know, one of the things oh, with with guys. Terminator that they uh, that I wasn't clear on again. I don't think they're going to reboot the whole franchise. What I think that what they meant by reboot is it's just like they're they're just revamping the whole thing, mm. and they're going to take because there was a rumor that came out a couple of weeks ago that The Rock. I was going to play yeah. the the evil Terminator's time, and Arnold will play a human in like the 40s and 50s. What's your problem, Tim? No, I'm excited. Yeah. Anytime I hear anything about The, the rock, rock, you know how she loves The yeah. Rock, you guys. I Did actually, you not know this? <laughs> yeah, she loves Look rock. at her. There's a glow happening oh, on her oh, face know. right now. It's do you think The Rock can play evil? Honestly, I think he can do anything. I think he can. Oh, wow. Honestly, oh, <laughs> can you smell what The Rock is cooking? He can do anything. Yeah, um, right. I feel like right. it would be weird seeing him like. As a robot, though. He kind of was a robot until he got some acting lessons. So it's, as long as he's like an evil robot, I'm serious. Instead of a good robot, like, you don't, if you're playing a cyborg, you don't need a whole, you don't need to be Daniel Day Lewis to pull off being a cyborg. Right. That's true. You know? yeah. um, <laughs> I think, I actually think, and I'm not just doing this to appease the girls, I think Jason Momoa would be a great choice. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I, think I, I agree with yeah. you. And yeah. We were just talking about him uh, about that, again, that axe fight with bullet in the head. Like, he was, oh, the, best part so of that, good. He was the best part of that movie. He clearly has a gym so membership. Good. Here's what I think you need to do <laughs> with, with the Terminator franchise is do what uh, what they wanted to try to do with Superman Returns yeah. is that, okay, let's say, hey, what was the last great movie in the Terminator franchise? Terminator 2. Yeah, so let's just go back to that and then we'll make a we'll movie. We'll make between. another Terminator 3 yeah. and just kind of forget about those other well, ones. I, I don't understand. They're saying they're going to make Arnold Schwarzenegger a human now? Yeah. Like what, that he's the prototype for... I, 
the maybe uh, Terminator, maybe like, That's kind of like thinking. Cylon style. It's like, so exciting. Riley who stood knows? up. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the rumor is crazy. I don't know if you guys have heard the full rumor. Yeah. No, come on. Um, on. So it, the the original rumor was like 40s, 50s, and uh, they send back uh, the Rock, the Terminator, to kill Sarah Connor's parents, and. A nice <laughs> neighbor back. and a nice neighbor picks up a shovel and starts to you know beat the hell out of the rock. Who is Arnold the rock. Schwarzenegger? Who is Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. And Skynet goes, "Oh hey, let's make him the prototype." Oh. Yeah, so that's the rumor. I heard that and I went, "Fuck yeah, that sounds cool. That sounds but, awesome." But yeah, but. Is how are they having? And then a the next one, it's the, the grandparents, and then the great grandparents. Well, That's because right. the signing of the Declaration <laughs> yeah. of Independence right. involved Terminator. I won't lie though; I would really like to see a fight between The Rock and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, you know what you're going to see. Pretty pumped about that. You're, you're going to see a fight between your boy, what's it, Mark Millar, Mark Miller, however you say it, and Millar. Jim Carrey, because uh, a lot <laughs> Actually, of stuff. No, though. What? Millar's article was very like it was, but it was political. I mean, the, as political as he had to be, obviously, because if you guys don't know what was going on, is that Jim Carrey, uh, you know, this week sent out a really bizarre tweet about how you know he doesn't support the movie, he can't support the movie anymore because mm-hmm. he's. But he was a gun. He was a, he was against guns before he did the movie. He read the script. You know, it's like, come on. You know, I, I, you know, you saw the first yeah. movie. Yeah. I'll defend him because he is a mentally imbalanced comedian. <laughs> and there's one of those on the podcast too. I think, like, if you JTI have, doesn't do comedy. If you have like, uh, like on one end you have Jim Carrey, right, and he's and he's he's going crazy and he's very very anti gun. Then on the other end of the spectrum you have Ted Nugent and Kenny Knapsack hanging out at Nugent's ranch. I'm accurate. much more towards the Jim Carrey side of the argument, and I think that you can say he read the script, and I know he did. But and even though there's been school he shootings, he filmed it all. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you agree to do something, yeah. I feel like you agree all the way through. You right. can't just you know at be like, end, oh, yeah. at the end, be like, but I can't support this anymore. Everybody, yeah. everybody that got back from wherever they were when they saw what happened at Sandy Hook was a gun punch. Nobody was like, oh, that's just another school shooting. That felt different, I and, and I it hadn't happened in a while. Yeah. So whatever you did up until then, that. Can and change your perspective on it. Having said that, yeah. I you know I think Jim Carrey should should still promote the movie. Right. You can spin this in a positive way. Say, hey, yeah. look, I want everybody to know this is a movie. Exactly. Yes. yes. Exactly. exactly. And it's yeah. like you're, if you're, you know anything about the Kick-Ass franchise, he doesn't use guns. That is, is character. Well, but the whole comic book series is so uber violent, over the top, right. ridiculous. Right. Like. Mm-hmm. It's so much so that it's fantastical. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like Clockwork Orange style to me in the vein where it's like, this is so ridiculous that it's not realistic. Well, right. I, I agree with you. And I think that he should have known. He, he did know it going into yeah. it. He saw the trailers. But anyway, we have, we have a caller on uh, that we're going to ask his opinion. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hickory Dickory Doc. No. Bob Finstock. <laughs> Stop wow. calling. Early riser, Finstock. Uh, so the fin, the Finstock. What, what's going on? Uh, I'm watching the. I'm actually currently watching the original Annie right now with two Indian chicks who don't speak any English. One coincidentally looks like Bernadette Peters. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like looking at Relia's yeah. face while she's listening to this. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> hold on, fin, Finstock, Finstock, you have something to say? Is are, 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 was Tiffany and and Rachel? Working out together earlier. They were Rachel. In the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Rachel? I don't know who Rachel is. <laughs> do you mean, He's talking about me. Rihanna? Do you mean, Rihanna? Not Rihanna. Do you mean, do you mean, do you mean Rylea? Can I be Rihanna today, guys? Uh, Rylea, uh, yeah. Well, okay, so we have all right. Hi, buddy. Rihanna and Rachel. All right, do you, so do you have something to say, Finsack, or are you just causing mad? I was going to say, I, I think that, I think, I was going to tell Tiffany the time's up with me and her. Oh. I think our, I think our, I think our little relationship's over with. I, oh, I wow. think I like Breaking Re- news. Leah now. You like oh, Leah now? Oh, 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 so your site, the Finstock. Wow, oh, yeah. the Finstock sites. Are I know. What, I know what Finstock. Record. I know what he's doing. Finstock what? is just he's playing hard to get for Tiffany. So that now Tiffany uh, well, is going like to get shaking. jealous. Yeah. I have feelings for you now. It doesn't work that way, buddy. It doesn't work that right, way. We'll see. We'll see. It's playing hard to get. Uh, Finstock, before... Is Ray, Lee, is Ray Lee available? Well, her name's Ray Lee, and, uh, and she... She's, is, she's currently married. Currently. No, she's currently yeah. married, so you're out of, you're out of luck, yeah. buddy. So you might have to go back to... I just had an anniversary, too. But I have... You have to go back to Tiffany. My chest has won awards. My chest, my chest has won awards. Your, your chest has won awards. Won awards. His chest has won awards. All right, listen to me. Are you from the Jersey Shore? Or... Hey, like... he, uh, he's close. He's close. All right, when you see a picture, you'll... Hey, I'm, I'm looking forward to... I'm, I'm, we're looking forward to... Uh, look, for, look out for uh, me walking uh, JTI around there. Yeah, well, that's what I was about to say, because the, the intern, uh, the kid just showed me the leash. So what, we got to figure oh, th- We got to figure this out. When are you going to be walking uh, Josh the intern around on a leash while you interview people? I'm thinking I could do it Sunday or Monday. This Sunday or Monday, JTI? Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. All right, JTI says Sunday. Oh. Gonna work. All right, so you guys will be at the Grove <laughs> this Sunday, the Grove in L.A., so look out for Bobby Finstock and JTI, who will be walked around the Grove like a dog. Okay, great. All right. I love you, Tiffany. All right, so he's you back. You just he's said back you were done with me. Yeah, but I'm back on I'm back I'm on the so wishy-washy. All right, all right. All right. Finstock and the crazy man is out of town. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of mentally imbalanced funny people, yes. Bobby yes. Finstock. Bobby Finstock. Yes. Okay, before, yeah. now before we go, um, there's go to break. I want to uh, weigh in on a story yeah, real yeah, yeah, quick. Please. If you have one that you I think we're going to talk up. about the same one. The Shredder? Oh, no, no, you can bring that one yeah, up. Just, because everybody was so disgusted, which I wasn't, but everybody else was so up in arms about the casting of Megan Fox mm-hmm. as April O'Neil in this new Ninja Turtles movie. I really don't care. I care about so I care about the Ninja know. Turtles. Like, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't care that. about Megan Fox. I, I, that's fine with me. That's yeah. not going to bother me. It's uh, William Fitchner as Shredder, who, by the way, his name is Oroko Saki. How but, are you going to pull that one off, white guy? Like that's that's a, it's a Japanese. That's Tom Cruise, huh? Yeah, yeah. in the Last Samurai. Yeah, it's Look, like Christopher I, Lambert playing Ray. It's happened I, before. I'm, I'm with O'Reilly at this point, but I, I, the the movie itself, though, to me, I, what I really liked the 1990 version when it came out. Loved it. Loved yeah. it. Uh, I don't give a shit about this movie anymore because Secret of the U is even better. It yeah. is going. It is Guess handled what, so though? poorly. There's there's a slight chance that because we all have such low expectations it, that, that when it's it comes gonna rock, out, we're gonna be like, okay, Here, that's okay. kind of how Here's I why. felt. Like with World War Z, where I was like, ah, uh, difference, big difference. You look, well, look at the I mean, people. It's look at Brad Pitt. The, and, fine, and, and but even the director, even the director of World War Z, uh, had done one of the but Bond you films just before. Don't like Michael Bay, but Michael Bay is not directing this film. Michael Bay is producing it, and I don't like him. And he, yeah, but, but <laughs> and I don't like him. The but. director of the movie has done a bunch of shit bombs too. I just can't remember which one. Yeah, but it's it still, it's different. Expecting having no expectations for World War Z, which I had, I had didn't read it. Obviously, oh, I had really I low in. expectations for the movie. And, but you're expecting I shit like like. Yeah, like the Ninja Turtles? Well, I was because here's the thing. I knew that there were so many production holdups, redos. They rewrote the whole third act, shot it a year, like within the year after, which mm-hmm. generally is a really bad sign. Mm. And I knew I've read the book, so I was like, I don't know how they're going to yeah. make this into a movie. So I had low expectations, and I loved it. Yes, and there were, but that was the thing though too. Again, there was, there was production problems, and it's very rare, like you said in World War Z to where you can have production problems like that and have such a blown up budget and yeah. still come out on top. Yeah. It doesn't happen often. This movie... Especially not when you have alien turtles involved. Uh, well, this this movie, you pissed off a lot of people right off the bat. So yeah. anyway, let's... Uh, one more story before we go to break. Uh, we got about, what, a minute, minute left, Ken? Okay. So, Taken 3. Yes. So stupid. And Ooh. what are, they, what are they, they're calling this movie? Apparently the new title is Worst Dad of All Time. And, <laughs> and, and then we are going to, to see this nonsense happen again and again and again. I would honestly... Is it to the same family? Let Liam Who knows? Neeson the second one, read, so... say, do, talk Get, Let's do Dark time. Man 2 then. His voice They did that. No, but with the him. They did Dark Man 3, Die, Dark I know, Man, but let's... Die. <laughs> Well, they should. He well, maybe, maybe taken should. Maybe That's taken. All I have to say. Taken yes. should have taken yes. that advice. Look, I, I know a little something about running a joke into the ground. Okay, yeah. and Taken Three has one of two options right now. You can rebound from Taken Two, and you can make it better. You can make it more realistic. You can make it not involve his family. Maybe he brings some of his ex Special Forces boys with him. Where he or, learned all of these special set of skills. Yeah. yeah. Or you can make it a buddy cop film with him and Maggie Grace both throwing <laughs> grenades off the top of buildings. <laughs> there you and go. Right. Either way, it's going to make his a lot daughter of daughter to be awesome. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah, but will it will it make as much money? They paid him. Taking they no paid more. him twenty million yeah, dollars yeah. to do the they movie. Back the truck up yeah. to his lawn. So I don't know why t- Will Smith can't get it. <laughs> yeah, take a page, Roland. All right, right on that. <laughs> and with that, right that's that. the movie news. Uh, we're gonna be back in just a little bit, talking all Pixar movies, and we're gonna take your phone calles and tweets of what Pixar movies we should be talking about. We're here with Riley Vanderbilt of Team Unicorn, <laughs> Tiffany Smith, myself, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, the whole Schmoes crew, Johnny Ice. Take us to break, my friend. Now this is the this is the Pixar music, and we're about to get into the Pixar conversation. But during the break, our our great engineer Johnny Ice, he was asking me why I had such a beef with Michael. No, 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 that's not. Way, I ask it the way you asked it, Johnny. <laughs> I said, well, actually, I said Jerry Brockheimer. But I said, <laughs> what did? Did Michael Bay rape your ass or something? <laughs> Why do I hate him so much? Um, no, I just said because he's such a shitty guy, and I can't, I can't stand, I can't stand what he does. I can't like, stand him. I can't. I just can't. And I went, and I went into, I went into a breakdown of kind of something that one of the fans sent us about. <laughs> 
how he broke down, like how I needed good space suits in Armageddon, and like how he caught some lady painting a garden glove and he yelled at her. He's just a douche. But anyway, uh, is that a confirmed report or but, is that just somebody? Yeah, no, heard I heard something? it. I heard it. He oh, says you it. heard it on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, it's got to be no, true. He Let's says it. I heard his voice say Michael say Bay the words. saying yes. that he yelled yes. at somebody yes. painting yes. a garden glove. Yes. It would be funny if there was like an impersonator, like a Michael Bay impersonator, <laughs> yeah, just wow. saying all this stuff out there, and everyone's like, God, he's such a dick. He's, he's got a body. He's like the nicest guy. He's like, I don't know. Right. Yes. He's like. It's not really. Michael Bay, he's, it's like the wizard. Yeah, he's yeah. some poor guy with glasses. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Johnny says to me, he's like, oh, I like all his, he's a douche, he sounds like a douche, but I like all his movies, and I said, I can guarantee you like a couple of his movies. Yeah. You like The Rock. Yeah. Love yes, The Rock. Love I, it. Love you it. like The First Bad Boys. Yeah. Sure. And Second. And Second. Second's all right, good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, you like Armageddon. Yeah. Love Armageddon, it. Armageddon, yeah. What else? Transformers. You, first, right. one. First, first one. First one. First one's good. First one's good. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Con- no! <laughs> what did you just say? Did you say Congo? No, Pearl Harbor. Oh, Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. Johnny Ice has been replaced as an engineer <laughs> for the show by no. his dog, MacGyver. Pearl Wait, Harbor? Like, oh, was, my God. It was fun. It was fun. All right, look. All right, here's all right, what right, we're doing right fun. now. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop talking oh. about Michael Bay movies, which we seem to have a yeah. slight disagreement <laughs> on. We're gonna talk about movies that are universally loved the world over, and that would be by the company known as Pixar. Yes, and it was okay. a wonderful transition. However. Oh, there was one thing that I needed that. to do. I oh apologize. I had to shit on it. I had oh to shit on it. It was you a know, great Christian, transition. It was a great transition, but when I my wanted... co-host starts hissing like a cat, I figure maybe <laughs> it's time to get the wheels back on the wagon. All right, but before we trying. do that, I want to talk to Rylea about some of the stuff that she's doing right now because okay. there's a lot of cool stuff she's got going Rachel, on. You mean Rachel, according to Bobby Finch? Rachel. <laughs> yeah. so, or, or Rihanna. Rihanna. Yes. Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, Rihanna, can you tell me uh, <laughs> a little bit about Team Unicorn, first of all, for any of our listeners in Schmobile that might not be familiar with it, what exactly is Team Unicorn? Well, Team Unicorn started three years ago. Um, it's basically a... Um, it's it, Right now, it's an online production company. We do online videos. Uh, it's me, uh, three other girls who were friends at first, just into really nerdy, geeky stuff. And I like it. Yeah. Yep. And we which just, is how we became friends. And which is, <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, we just started, we started making videos. We are all actresses, and we started with a parody song to Katy Perry's California Girls called <laughs> Geeking Gamer Girls, because why wouldn't you? Right. <laughs> um, and it kind of blew up, and it, it, it turned pretty big, and we were like, oh, maybe. Maybe we should There's something to it. Keep doing it. Yeah. And so that's what we've been doing for the past three years. And uh, luckily, this last year, we got a development deal with Adult Swim. Oh, nice. And nice. Uh, we got picked up to pilot. So oh, wow. Congratulations. That's exciting. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you hear yeah. like a band and you want to know, okay, who came up with the name of the band? Who came up with the name Team Unicorn? <laughs> Who's the biggest unicorn fan? Well, <laughs> The term unicorn uh, for us, it's uh, geek girl like uh, like unicorns. Geek girls were not supposed to exist, but ah, they do. Yeah. We're out there. Yeah. I hate yep. when guys are uh-huh. like, "You're a girl. You don't play games. You can't be into Star Wars." Well, <laughs> guess what, guys? We are out there. Yeah, they got horns. True. So, um, so a couple For doing this show, yeah. I've discovered that more and more. I'll tell you it's that. incredible. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, so um, a couple <laughs> I keep of girls have been the uh-huh. called unicorns before, mm-hmm. and. Um, Claire Grant, who uh, is one of my partners, she's uh, she used to have a thing called Team Awesome, which mm-hmm. was awesome too. Um, and then we like just kind of put it together, <laughs> Team Unicorn. We needed a band name, and that's what happened. So, yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, yeah. God, all right, and then you also, so you said you're an actress as well. Mm-hmm. So you just recently done the movie Hatchet Three. Yep. Yep. And so again, can you, uh, if the audience is not familiar with, it, can you tell us a little bit about Hatchet? Uh, well, the Hatchet pr- uh, friends. Okay. <laughs> the Hatchet franchise. Um, it's early in the morning. It uh, it was created by Adam Green, and uh, it's basically a um, a, um, a slasher franchise, mm-hmm. but like it's, super over the top, right? Yeah, it's pretty gory, but fantastical. Yeah. So it's not like torture porn. Kick or ass, but like horror. That. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. would imagine it'd be pretty Rockets gory. You can handle it. No. Yeah. Oh, you can't handle. She it. was like, "Do you want to come?" And I was like, "I actually did have something that night," but I was like, "Ah." Oh, Something what did we just see with you? World War Z? I still have scars on my arms from watching that I movie. There's like it. not even blood in that. Movie. They, no, it's not, not it's bad at all. Spent stuff, and I mm-hmm. yes, I grasped and Riley, Christian Riley and too. Riley's hands like it was my job. Yeah, that's was. what happens. So there's a guy running around killing people with a hatchet. Uh, ba- well, basically, it's it's a basically a swamp monster, a deformed 
uh, Swamp mo- Monster. There you go. Because yeah. you would think by the third Hatchet movie, if the guy had any sort of intelligence, he'd be like, you know, this Hatchet just isn't working. I yeah. need to get a gun. Well, I mean, uh, he uses he uses a gas-powered uh, belt sender. He uses a one of those huge uh, chainsaws, you know, that you awesome. need five people to use. Yeah. He uses everything. But well, the Hatchet is Hatchet's his. the uh, the catch-all for Yeah, yeah that's it. So, he started with the Hatchet. Wow, he's I'm, killing unicorns. Are you the, yeah, are you the, are you the, like, the Jennifer Love Hewitt in the movie for the... Uh, uh, you did last do you su- I, you did I last unfortunately summer? am not the You're last not. girl. Okay. Uh, but I make it pretty far. Okay. And I kick ass. I'm a I'm a SWAT officer, so oh. it's not like I'm getting naked so like what? most girls in slash. You're not like, oh in slow motion. I'm gonna have sex and then I'm gonna die. That's no, that's I, I disagree with that. If any of our listeners, if you're being chased <laughs> by somebody in the woods, have number sex. one, get sex. a shower. Yeah. Make sure you're clean. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. now where where can where can uh, the Schmoville find uh, Hatchet Three? Uh, you can actually get a, a video on demand right now, oh, which is the easiest thing. It, it only played in a couple cities, so that's that's the way to it's go. It's playing awesome. in the city of Mark's apartment later on tonight. Really? As well. I'm yeah. an all-nighter. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that Hatchet yeah. 3 might be better than Little Fucker. Oh, come on. No. I wouldn't know. It's pretty good. No. I, I mean, it's like the Rambo you know. of, a sl- of slasher movies. Yeah. Little Fucker was That's a like horror a really film that Mr. Ellis was in. Yeah. yeah. So I, don't, I, wanna, I can't wait to see it. Oh, by the way, guns. you hey. can find Little Fucker trailer on YouTube. So. Look, I, I survived Little Fucker you spoiler alert. You, you, look, you're really funny in that. It was Fat Ellis, but you're still there. <laughs> All right. All right. You, 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 know, were, you were funny in that. No, no. I didn't like your tone. What? I want to talk about something happy now. All right. Let's talk about Pixar. Pixar. It's time to go to Pixar. It's time to go to Pixar. We are here with Riley Vanderbilt, Tiffany Smith. Mark Ellis, myself, right. Christian Arnold. Let's talk about Pixar. <laughs> just hey, hi. Hey, Schmoville, why don't you tweet us in what movie should we talk about? We have a lot, a lot of suggestions already. Yeah, what's your favorite okay. and your least favorite Pixar movie of all time? How yeah. much do you love uh, Toy Story? How much do you hate Wally? Right, Let let's, us know. Let's start with Toy Story. How do you not start with Toy Story? Because that's the that's one the that not only changed the game because Pixar started. Right. You know, that's when they, they entered the, the game, if you will, but it also it just transitioned. From those, you know, the old school Disney cartoons and stuff. To this is a different kind of animation. That's mm-hmm. the first time you remember it when you saw yeah. Toy Story. So, how does everybody love Toy Story, and do you still think it holds up? <laughs> how does everybody love Toy Story? Yeah. Yeah. On a scale true. of hugs to rainbows, <laughs> how much do you love Toy Story? <laughs> yeah, I mean, does it no... make your butt tingle? I mean, is that, I mean you know, if happening? Johnny Ice loved Pearl Harbor, you must love Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, all right, let's let's talk about let's talk about Toy Story. How much does everybody love it? It's great. Uh, it, it just got a lot of heart. Um, yeah, I mean, and it's so nostalgic because yeah. I think we all can relate to having those toys and being that close. I remember one time telling my mother I was going to run away, and the only thing I packed was my stuffed animals. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel like it just takes you back to that time. It does, and it's yeah. funny because I have a one-and-a-half-year-old. and like, <laughs> I, Oh, really? I would, Congratulations. I would, I would be lying if I don't look around and be like, I wonder what they're saying when I'm not here. Yeah. Like, you're looking at the stuffed animals yeah. and being you gotta like, you got to stop yeah. getting stoned when your baby's at your daughter. <laughs> true. Should I? Yeah. All right. uh, Wait. After seeing Toy Story, that's what you think now, what the toys are saying? I, do. I mean, I haven't seen Toy Story in a while. I still do it. <laughs> to be honest, that's the most impressive thing about the, the film f- series to me is that you take the premise is it's a bunch of toys that come to life. That's a horror movie. Like, that's that's <laughs> a horror yeah, movie. That's, that's a child's Chucky. play. That's Chucky, yeah. And they made it into the most adorable thing. That's what I love about kids' movies is when they take something that could potentially be scary or mm-hmm. feel kind of threatening and they make it. They make it fun yeah. for kids, like yeah. you know, or sure. adults that yeah. have trouble sleeping in the dark. But what it also did, though, you know, especially uh, Pixar, shows you what the, the development of the greatness, because the way that they put the voices together and the animation, mm-hmm. but the music too, Randy mm-hmm. Newman, you know, coming in there, and it just, everything worked. So it was that wow factor. Yeah. It was the beginning of that wow, and it just, the follow-up to the next one was was great as well. I forget. I, it, right, Toy was Story it, 2 was the name of that. No, <laughs> no, no, that wasn't the next one. I think, I believe, what was it? <laughs> It was yeah. a Bugs oh, Life was the second yeah. one, yeah, which was which another. I, I, I feel like it came at a time where, for me, I, I grew up and would always go see every Disney movie that ever came mm-hmm. out. Like, The Aladdin, Pocahontas, that kind of stuff. Mulan, and so I was, missed. T- I, I saw Mulan. I took Mulan off. I, that's not nice. I went to see all the ones with the quote-unquote ethnic princesses. <laughs> yeah, hey, don't... Because I needed to have a princess. Throw me under the bus. I was like, Mulan, where is she from? (laughs) Oh, no, forget it. Forget it. I walked in his, but he was watching Princess and the Frog the other day. So don't tell me. So, but what I was saying was, I I feel like. I told you, don't tell anybody. Too late. We're not on the air. Yeah. Um, Like, there was a kind of lapse of those films being great. And so then when Toy Story came out, it was a different feeling, but still that vibe of, you know, you really connect to them and you have this emotional feeling 
with animated characters, which is strange yeah. sometimes. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you, you do feel, you absolutely felt the emotion in those movies. And Bugs yeah. Life, I agree with you, Riley. It's good. It's, it's not good, what fun it was... time, but it, it, you don't connect to it, I think. And you almost forget about it. Yeah, when you say yeah. Bugs Life, you go, oh, oh yeah, yeah, Bugs Life. I get it confused right. with that other one about Bugs. Ants. Ants, Ants yeah. Ants. Ants. Didn't they come out like Ants-Z. the same time? But yeah. let's take let's take a call from Schmoville talking about Pixar movies. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Jerry Silvera. Hey, Jason. What's Hi. up, man? So we're talking Pixar movies here. Uh, you got a favorite that you want us to talk about? We talked about Toy Story and Bugs Life. What do you got? Uh, Ratatouille. Ratatouille. I loved Ratatouille. It's not a Pixar film, is it? See, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, it's not yeah. a Pixar. It's DreamWorks. It's the Pixar style, though. Yeah. Oh, and, okay, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, it is it's Pixar. Pixar. Is it? See? Yeah. That's, what, it Pixar. that's what, you're right. It is Pixar? No, it you know, because I really didn't think it was. You're right. No, he's right. It is Pixar because. I'm just testing Schmoke. But no, but I don't, I don't blame rescue. you. I don't blame you for doing that because when it first came, when he first said it, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, it is. And I was about to say, that's one of those ones you don't even remember being a Pixar film because, but yeah, it is a Pixar film. It's fantastic. Fantastic. It's so weird. I was having a conversation about this movie today. Really? Yeah, it's so and, odd. Yeah. Well, I, I've only ever seen it once, and I was like, that's good. I yeah. own it, but I haven't seen it again. And we, ha- uh, my husband and I have a friend who's just like, it is the best movie. It's the best Pixar movie. <laughs> Catherine Reitman, our old host, like, loves it. Maybe we got to watch yeah. it again. Like, maybe we missed something. Yeah, well, and Jason, what, what's your favorite part about uh, Ratatouille? What do you like about it? Uh, something about that movie is just, uh, seems so special about it. I don't know, like with with the relationship with the with the human. I don't know his name, but Kirk, yeah. I'm trying to remember his name. Well, but I like so you know what I like about it? it. Also, that movie, that movie, it, it's it, normally in every movie, the rat is either like the villain or the rat's yeah. like you know the rat is always evil. And in this one, they, they don't it, you. He, you know, Except you get the teenage yeah, mutant ninja turtles. Right, that's true. <laughs> yeah. 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 You get you get the lighter side of the, of him. Though. It's the yeah. ultimate yeah. underdog story. It's the yeah. rat who because rats yeah. it tend, generally when you see rats in a kitchen, it's not a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this rat really wants to be a chef. I mean, and before that, it was always if you wanted a cute thing, you would put mouse in. Maybe a movie. it's because he has a dream. You right. can all relate, right, guys? Yeah. yeah, that's the truth. Thank you, Jason. Well, and it's like the right. nerdy Thank guy. Winning in the end, you yeah. know, where it's yeah. like the guy who actually is yeah. cooking is like so awkward and gangly and weird, yeah. and, and I, he's like, "I'm going to partner up with this other weird, gross." Yeah, thing. it's a two misfits, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll, look, I'll be honest <laughs> with you, I would be lying if I didn't want to try that rat's cooking. I mean, they looked like he knew what he was His doing. His ratatouille is probably delicious. It's probably good. <laughs> Between ratatouille and Chuck and Cheese, them rats are making because when I looked at his eyes, he was so serious. I'm dead serious. He is I, so serious I, right now. I love food, and that rat looked like, I don't give it a cartoon. You throw me in there like Last Action Hero, I'll eat all that shit up. I don't care. Uh, hey, the kid, come here for a second. I want to ask the kid what... Um, Disney's wh- like right now making a new restaurant. It's true. So, <laughs> hey, hey, the kid. Filled with rats. So, out of all the... If they the, catch rats in the kitchen, it's like, oh, no, it's part of the gag. It's not, no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we still get an A, right? Dance, so, <laughs> you just tweeted out about Brad Bird. Why is Brad Bird such a great Pixar director? If if um, if we look at you know uh, The Incredibles and Ratatouille or some of the you know aside from Toy Story, people love those those too. And you think about you know why are they so good? And Brad Bird is the director, and he went on to do Mission Impossible Four. Yep, live action. So and everybody and I don't know if we're jumping into this already, but talking about sequels and you know yeah, how on. how you know a lot of people are realizing that right now Pixar is is favoring money, business rather than quality. All the Pixar films were traditional because they were original. Mm-hmm. You do one, it's original, and then you move on to a new story. And now after Cars two, it was you know just like one sequel after the other, and they're like yeah whatever it makes money. But um, and the one sequel that people are begging about is The Incredibles two. You know, everybody wants it. And the end of the first one, I think it's one of the only Pixar ones that is set up for a, set th- for yeah. a sequel. Mm-hmm. And Brad Bird, this shows how a director can favor, you know, creativity and, 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 uh, and, and you know, value of a film says, I, they asked me to do it. And I said, no, I, I would not want to do it because I don't have a good story, a story that's good enough yet. And that's why he's one. Thank yeah. you, the kid. Yeah. Uh, that was a great thank point. You. Thank you, the kid. That's the best Thank example you. of illegal immigration right there. <laughs> <laughs> the kid. The he's the, taking sentences that I want in America, yeah. and he's exporting them. The kid has never <laughs> hit the mic and not made a good point. So yeah. that's we're going to miss him when, so because he's our only intern that can speak English. Um, <laughs> so we are. Uh, doesn't wear a leash. Yeah, yeah. so 
doesn't wear a leash. So, again, uh, don't worry, JT. You're going to get you to talk about your favorite uh, Pixar film in a second, too. Yeah. So we, uh, Pixar we, was like, but you look at Pixar's run, and they had an amazing run. And we compare it to Tiger Woods' run yeah. before the scandal. <laughs> yeah. It's like that guy, just every time Pixar had a movie come out, and they're still, I think they're 14 for 14 with number one opening weekends. Yeah. Yeah. But it hasn't been universally loved the recently. Like, yeah. Yeah. Brave was really the one for me when I'm like, what are you guys yeah. How do you fuck that story up? It was so good for 20 minutes. And now it's a movie yeah. about her mom getting turned into a bear? See, that was, yeah, that's... Yeah. Was, what? Well, well Car- Cars 2 was for me... I hated it. Why that does movie. everybody hate Cars 2? I hated it. It's because they, they I didn't switched. even like Cars, but yeah. I, I, I... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I just... It's a inanimate object. They're inanimate objects. It's hard for me to, like, feel for Cars. But they could do it I mean, with I love toys. Cars. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that they could do it with toys. Yes, I didn't. I didn't mind. That's why. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind the inanimate inanimate object part. What I hated was how they they switched because that tow truck. (laughs) He's a he's a secondary character. He's not the lead. And you made me watch a full movie of that dildo face, and I'm like, I'm (laughs) I'm watching it. Children's movie, Christian. No, no children are listening to this show. And so I'm watch I'm I watching know, it I and I'm like, I'm just so <laughs> like ugh. I just think I, I Brave. think I think Larry the Cable Guy is a great voiceover for the tow truck, and I think that was the perfect vehicle for me. Say whatever you want about a stand up, <laughs> yeah. It's not his Literally real accent. A it's, vehicle for him. But oh that, see? Uh, unicorn. Unintended. I like yeah, but I <laughs> I think I think everybody hates. I think everybody has a uh, predisposition to hate towards Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. And if you just put that to the side, no, no, no. you can just enjoy the movie. Uh, but that wasn't it for me. Like I don't mind because you know he's in the first one, and yeah. I didn't mind the first one that much because he's in the back. He's he's he's, he's the guy that comes in. He hits his joke. He's out. I'd rather hear, whole... hear him talk than Owen Wilson no, with a stupid. So uh, well, it's it's interesting to me because I'm like that. That film had such an impact that Disney was like, we're going to make a whole section of the park for yeah. cars. Well, and that sounds like a pretty great like, music It didn't impact me that much to be yeah. like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I mean, I think Boys do. needed a good Pixar movie. I mean, there's Toy Story and stuff, but I feel like, you know, Disney and yeah. it's mm-hmm. all kind of geared more towards girls. Geared? Oh, oh look yeah. at you. Right back at you. Right back at you. Now, we'll get into it's Brave because I'd don't. i don't want, I'd like to go negative positive, then negative again. But let's, because <laughs> I want to go back. We got, how do you Steve not, because I don't want to step over Finding Nemo. Oh, I mean, amazing. Finding Nemo. Again, talking about their movie, which they're, they're going to do the a sequel. Well, they're doing Finding Dory, which yeah. is 2015, by the way. Um, Holy yeah. moly. So, but, but Finding Nemo, and again, now my daughter is starting. Mimo, Mimo. She loves Nemo. Everyone lo- kids it's, it, love it. It's with an N, Vivian. <laughs> Get it straight. Unbelievable. One and a half year old. Yeah, get a job. You know, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to teach her, but she don't know shit. Um, <laughs> so, but it's because of the things that you call characters oh. in kids movies. Yeah, like, well, I can't even. Say why, do I, why do I feel Leanne's gonna do a uh, a poster on that one? No, uh, <laughs> no, she and, better not. Anyway, so getting into Finding Nemo, uh, it, it, this movie it just and it re released. We got to see it again. It is probably close to perfect. I yeah. mean, it, you know, it's it's so good, and it has everything. The beginning it has that Bambi moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it was my <laughs> first time seeing Finding oh, Nemo yeah, when we it. they re-released it like, last year, and we reviewed it. And like, I'd heard of Finding Nemo, I heard kids love it, and I'll like it. It's Pixar, you know, classic Pixar. I wasn't prepared for that opening, man. That opening, yeah, yeah I get you. God, yeah. Woo. Well, and that's the thing with the Disney films when they work and the Pixar films when they work, that there's such an emotional connection up. and a family uh, I connection. I was about to say up. I was yeah. crying in the first yeah. five minutes, bawling my yeah. eyes out. And five minutes of that film, is like, oh, my God, this is up, just. Yeah. Oh, geez. And it's because my, my they wife, put so much into the relationships. Yes. And it's yeah. the emotion again. And yeah. they and brought in for, mm. for up that Michael Giacchino. Uh, score is unbelievable. I know that everyone really likes up and I'm probably going to get so much crap for this. I love the beginning, and I wish it was just a short. I wish it was just that. I don't think you're the I only person. I feel like you're not alone there, no. the rest of it. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing. No, okay. I mean, I, I actually. You I the rest of it. You I, just, oh, you know what? I went to the pictures I, today, and I saw an old couple disintegrate right in front of my eyes. <laughs> and then I left like, and went about my day. Like the paper man. Is it, was it called paper man, the short? Yeah, yeah. That, like, that to me was what the beginning of Up is. Uh, I want to see balloons, okay? I want to see colors. I want to see happiness. I want to see sunshine. If you're going to emotionally pull me in like that, you better have some sort of happy ending. And luckily, yeah. Up did. And I'm still trying to figure out how to lift my apartment complex up with, with helium. Well, yeah. All right. Let's, let's again, because I want to. I forgot that I want to see Ellis go off on a rant, but I'm not going to bring up the movie that will get him into the rant oh, yet. Gosh. Uh, I want to talk about Monsters, Inc. The fir- it. the, it's, it's a great, great movie. The, again, another one. This is when This is when the magic was just 
they couldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Monsters Inc. came out, and the, the casting of Billy Crystal and John Goodman together, mm-hmm. and the just the, the going into the dreams and everything that they excuse me going into the, the, the kids sleeping in the human world, it just worked. Yeah. So I mean, I th- I don't know how you guys feel about this, but it's I mean it's that movie ranked. has a lot of heart. Um, the the relationship between the little girl and um, and uh, Sol- not Sully. Yeah. Was it Sully? Mike? Sol- Mike. Sully. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sully, Sully's the Sully's the, the tall yeah, one. Okay. The, yeah, yeah, I was right. Yeah. Um, with uh, her and Sully, I think mm-hmm. is so great, and it's just it's almost boo. like yeah, a little mm-hmm. boo. Um, it's almost like she is their pet, and they're just mm-hmm. trying to get her through to get back to her. And she teaches her. them how to. Yeah. Warm, I, I love yeah, that. I loved it. Yeah, it's it's. So good. Seeing a lot of people have you know thoughts on Joseph Hemmings at JPH twenty nine. He says Monsters Inc. Crush, crushes Toy Story. A lot of people hold Monsters Inc. Really, they love it. I yeah. like that story. I like that the, yeah. the 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 dream. It's like it, Mike Wazowski because monsters. Mm-hmm. Like, why are we going to root for monsters? Oh well, they're dream. They they scare kids, and the screams actually power the world. Oh, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I took a date to see Monsters Inc. Um, and a date to see The Incredibles. The reason why I took them is Uh-oh. different women, obviously, uh, is because they had the, the Star Wars prequels trailers oh, right. before each that. one. Oh, yeah, episode two for you. Monsters Day. Yeah. Unfortunately, neither one of these women was a unicorn. Oh. Did, did, not, uh, did not like yeah, She had a horn, all right, not a unicorn. Oh. All right, it was a well, rhino. Well, I'm going to let you vent then. I'm going to let you vent though. I'm going to say the positives about what I, I actually liked this movie, but I know you're not a huge fan of the movie I'm about to bring up, uh-huh. and that's Wally. Oh, I really enjoy oh. Wally. Oh, um, I thought that Wally was one of the. It just. Again, I felt like I was watching Johnny Five again. I hadn't seen him in so long. And he's cleaning up all the trash. And then he goes, and it just it made an impact on me because it's like, yes, people don't take care of themselves and listen to this robot and don't be a slob. Yeah, it's a robot that, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's all alone. He watches a lot of show tunes. He's, you know, he's against alone. prop he aids. He, uh, yeah, and, he just, and then, he, then he gets cock teased by this iPod that comes down, <laughs> and, and it just She's floats around, never so reciprocates hot. anything. He's like, hey, finally, Eva. I get a, I get a play for it. And then she just, she just fucking, she works that poor son of a bitch all the way till he go. He leaves <laughs> he his had, nice, comfortable life, together. and he goes up. They end up together. What he had to go through, yeah, it's, yeah. no, not worth it. And it's boring <laughs> as shit. The movie is boring as piss. The first thirty <laughs> minutes, it's like why? It's like you're going on a ride along with a garbage man. It's like I, had to, I I'm out. This I mean, it's right. a little bit like Castaway, I guess. Yeah. Where he has nobody to talk to. Yeah, and yeah but Castaway. But sometimes that really works, like Moon. Yeah, like, that really works. Yeah. One See, guy. That's, and I agree. At Koopa Troopa, great name, yeah. uh, says Wally was so good that it didn't even need good dialogue. I agree. Like it did. It was. One it of has the- less lines than Superman had in Man of Steel. <laughs> There's nothing going on here, man. And by the time they get to where humanity is, and oh, that was kind of cool. How he, like that we all become such fat slobs that we just move around in these little things. That's that was kind of neat. But by the time that happens, I'm already bored. All right, I was a big fan of Wally, and but everybody. Loved it. That was the first time I've gotten a lot of internet hate over the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was the first time that I realized, wow, they, they can turn these on these internet you. kids. No, they, they can turn on you. Yeah, they, they, it's not 100% like live. Uh, let's get the J to the T to the I over here. Uh, let's uh, let's find out your your thoughts. What do you got? Uh, first of all, I think Pixar actually does sequels great. They were the first ones in my eyes to do a great animated sequel. Toy Story 1, 2, and 3 is yeah. like one of the best trilogies. Yeah. Yeah. So, And I was not a big fan of Cars. So when Cars yeah. 2 came out, I didn't even see it. Yeah. But well, like, treat yourself. Smart. I yeah. hear Monster oh. Monster University isn't that great. It's either. okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I haven't seen yeah. it yet. But I will say my favorite film is probably The Incredibles. And yeah. unless Red good. Bird doesn't come back, then I don't want to see it. Yeah. But if he does do it and he does yeah. it with he's Pixar, not he's not? Okay, well. He's still, Incredibles and me, Toy Story are like tied to tied. It's two, pl- two people race right there. All right. So there you go. So I mean, All again, right, call us here at Toad Hop. Which intern yeah. had a better session at the mic? Oh, the Italian kid. Come on. All right, let's <laughs> let, let's get uh, let's get one more call. One more call from Schmoville. Hey, we're talking about Pixar movies. You're in Schmoville. Who do we got? The intern. Oh, hey, uh, this is uh, Jason from Virginia. Hey, Jason, what's up, man? What do you got? Uh, well, um, you pretty much mentioned it already, but I've got to say, Toy Story Three. Toy Story Three. Yeah, and, you know, we didn't go really into depth on Toy Story Three, and that's one of those movies. It's it's hard to get into a third movie and make people go, wow. People were crying during I, Toy Well, again, you know, there's the whole nostalgia value. And then, yeah. you know, growing up, we all went through that where, you know, you're putting your stuff away from your uh, your home, your high school home or yeah. your childhood home. And, 
and you're going off to college or you're growing up and it's like, what do you keep? What do you get mm-hmm. rid of? Mm-hmm. You know, what goes into your mom's attic? Right. And so I think we all can relate to that. I agree. And, and I liked the, the ruse of the pink bear <laughs> because that pink bear was a nasty son Ned of a bitch. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I loved it. That movie, Toy Story 3, single-handedly turned me into a hoarder because after I saw that, I wouldn't let my mom throw anything away. Yeah. 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 That's my... Did you ever see the cartoon? Like, it was a Disney one a long time ago about the bug, like, old car. Uh, the jungle it's not bug. Herbie. Which no, one? The, he has the, this guy has the old car. It's a bug, and then it Christine? gets really Christine? junk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a card, like a short cartoon, and then the guy gets rid of it, and then this young kid comes oh, in and yeah, picks yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, I remember and I remember watching that as a little kid and feeling really emotional about yeah. it. And so watching Toy Story brought up all that stuff, and I was like, don't do it. Yeah, don't let's try it. Over well, an animated. And at well, the end, when he decides to give his toys away to that, yeah. the yeah, to that little that, girl. Yeah. Well, Jason, what was your favorite part of Toy Story three, and why? Why did you respond to it? Uh, it was it was the end because I identified with that moment so much, having to give up your toys yeah. mm-hmm. that you loved playing with so much. Yeah, that that hit because I remembered that so well. Uh, yeah, I totally agree, man. Jason, thank you for the call because that that's that's exactly why you get attached to the, the why it, when Pixar does it right, mm-hmm. they they tie into the emotion stuff too. And I can't remember what movie it was. It was right before where the Paper Man that that short that just won the, the Oscar yeah. too. Yeah. That was right before one of their recent. Um, I think no, that, when was it? When did that? Was that? I forget what movie it was that it came out. But anyway, that's the type of emotion that they need to tap into. Disney and Pixar, mm-hmm. they need to hit those moments because I think mm-hmm. they've lost it on Brave. I think if Brave was marketed differently, I think if Brave with the trailer would have let you know it was going to be that mother-daughter uh, story and didn't make it seem like, oh, this is about a warrior girl who's got to show the men that she can do it, that's yeah. what they marketed it as, yep. and it wasn't that. Yeah. yeah. it was. I thought it was going to be like Mulan style. Yeah. I thought it was, but ex- she didn't exactly. have to dress up as a boy. Right. Never seen right. it. Right. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, I think that even with that brave, like, I just felt like that was like the Mandarin reveal to me is that all the life got sucked out of the movie yeah. once you realize this is what we're in for. Because I was having a great time. She was going well, to prove her worth. Yeah. And then, yeah, but but even it, it, if even if I knew that going in, like, none of the jokes hit after that. that, the, that that's they, they, they got rid yeah. of those three uh, those three redheaded uh, kids, kids that were really funny. Yeah, they, were really they, just, funny. they just took a break. And yeah, never but, came I'm, back. but again, you, but because we both got duped. We were expecting so We went into that movie going, oh, this, I'm telling you, you would have been, a, I, I think, yeah. different. But guys. Also, I feel like I have a weird thing. Thing that I expected a love story. I don't. I don't know if it's because it's that's because what I grew up you with. probably like, saw it as like, a princess movie. You expected it to be like, like a Pixar, like movie. even in Mulan, where it's like at the end, there's a guy who's like, "Yes, you're awesome, the way you are." Yeah, <laughs> the girl in Brave hadn't met the right woman yet. That's <laughs> well, the reason we covered a lot of Pixar movies. I'm yeah. glad we did. Schmoville was great. Rylea, thank you for joining us thank for the you picture. For you, me. You're going to stick around for a little bit, or yeah, you, sure, okay, great. Not? So uh, right. just a little bit, we're going to have uh, Adam Ray from the new movie coming out this weekend, The Heat, and then Rylea will come back. Get it around the oh, you know we can where can we move we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> My so, last we'll out, Josh. We'll kick out Josh. Adam Ray will be here in a second. Tiffany Smith, Riley Vanderbilt, Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, Schmoes No Podcast. We'll be back in like two minutes or so. <laughs> Let's let this sink in. This is this is for our special ah. guest. Yeah, I know what this is for. Right, don't say anything. Universal Soldier. No, stop it. This is for our new guest. You but. better know it if it's special for him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We're joining uh, in, in studio. Joining us is our good buddy, the one of one of the. the I'm star- not dancing, by the way. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so. One of the stars from the new movie coming out, The Heat. We're talking with our buddy Adam Ray back in the studio. Yeah. What's, Adam? What's up, dude? Um, okay, we're going to talk to Adam in just a second about okay. the new movie and, right. and how I'm extremely jealous of him. And, that was um, the teaser trailer, if you will, for Adam's appearance on the podcast. Yes. And now yes. some business. <laughs> and now some business. We're going to have three more trailers yeah. between yeah. now and when he actually talks. Now about your it. sponsor, sponsor. Uh-huh. It's better yeah. be Crocodile Mile, by the way. It is Crocodile Mile. Crocodile we just Mile got and 2000 yeah. Flushes <laughs> Blue brings you the Schmozno podcast each and every week. Josh, hurry up and chug that. That was part of the deal. Um, now, we, uh, so again, guys, this is a message for Schmobile. Just let everybody know. You guys know that we're sponsored by Ripped Apparel. Uh, so if you go to Ripped Apparel, check out the, the widget underneath of the video right now on Toad Hop Network. And you can get, if you type in SK Podcast right now, you get a dollar off on, on the shirt 24 hours a day. They have new shirts, really cool shirts. Now, Here's the thing you guys have to realize for podcast listeners, YouTube listeners and watchers, we're going to ch- they're going to start changing the t- the code on starting July 1st. Every week there's going to be a new code. 
So you have to, if you listen to the show, if you, uh, you're on Facebook and Twitter, that's where you get it. You have to find everything on Schmoes to get the new code. It'll be every week. So just remember that if you're a ripped uh, user, a lot of people. A you new guys are, code because yeah, kids are selling other kids the code in school. Yeah, it's true. And they're it's keeping the it in lockers. And kids are getting in trouble, so it's going to yeah. be a new code well, every week. Well, you know who else is getting in trouble? Who's getting in trouble? You this weekend because you're going to Vegas, yes. buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, doing uh, the South Point Casino uh, in uh, Las Vegas. Stand-up comedy Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this week. Go to southpointcasino.com. For ticket information, I'm finally back on the road after my wow, hernia surgery. I'm going to bust some stitches okay. on stage, my friend. Ew, well, I, enough that's about, gross. Do you have hernia material? I have, I have a lot have of you, right? hernia like like material. Qu- yeah. Yeah. Well, hernia material, I just use the painkillers they gave me and get really fucked up before yeah. I go on stage. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. You right. see what comes out. Speaking of stand-up comedy, uh, it is good to welcome back uh, one of my best friends in stand-up. He's yeah. a good buddy Justin of mine. Stand up, yep. in, real life, stand up. Yeah. in real life, this we can't guy, stand each yeah. other. we're constantly yelling anti Semitic things outside each other's apartments. I would and not, he's not even Jewish, so it's like yeah. that's how you know I really hate him. I wouldn't pee on that Jew if he was on fire. His yeah. name is Adam yeah. Ray, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. By the way, that's Ray. not only, that was not only my senior quote, that's gonna be my gravestone. Yeah, yeah. I would not pee on that Jew if yeah. he was on fire. Oh, yeah, Very that's nice. my eulogy for you. Uh, yeah. the, the great Adam Ray is here, and Adam, uh, so listen, this, this, this is the, the god honest truth. Ellis and so, I went in there and we, we looked at each other, we're like. Please be good. Please be good. Please of be course, good. it's it's yeah. like when you like a friend of yeah. yours has you're like they've been doing community theater for like twelve years, yeah. and they keep bugging you to come see some shitty one act play. Like you got to come see the Fiddler's Village, and you're like, fuck, dude, that sounds awful. If it was the Fiddler's Roof, at least that's some sort of like connected to a play that like, actually exists. It's like a tiny studio. Yeah, too. it's a tiny studio. Yeah. It's just, Man, the roof was just the, the beginning. The this beginning. Is the whole street. Now it's the village, dude. Yeah. It's yeah. the whole family and their family's family. And yeah. You're like, that sounds just like the worst right. evening. Of all time, I was I so, was so nervous. It was the we screen. Were, was, yeah. It was on the Fox lot, and beforehand, you know, you're talking because Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Bullock are are in it, and you hope it's great. And Melissa McCarthy's so funny. Before the screening, we're telling everybody we're giving out Adam's headshots. Like, dude, please laugh at this Thank fucking you. guy. Yeah. I gave him a whole stack of ones from '98, and I was hoping you were gonna <laughs> hand him out because I can't do anything. It was him. like an Animal House when they show Bluto or they show uh, Flounder <laughs> on the screen, and everybody started throwing beer at you when you were on there. <laughs> but you, but you, uh, again, but you're that's. It's, but you liked it. I, I like. Are, are you going to build up to your review? Well, this is, well, well the thing is, like, again, hold on a second. Like you have All right, shit on yeah. but, but this is the thing. It starts. And I'm, a, I'm a fan of Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy right now. Mark and I are talking about. She, as far as comedy, she's not just because she's you know take the female aspect out of it. Sure, she's a comedy powerhouse. Yep. She. I mean, the woman is so funny. So good. I didn't like Identity Thief. I was not a fan of the movie. Did you like her though? Not so much. Oh, really? And the reason why is because I found because in the other movie she was in, when 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 Bridesmaids came out, I'll be honest, I saw the trailer. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be that same. I didn't know who she was, so I'm like, same cliche chick who's doing, it, and then she was. These broads ain't gonna be yeah. funny. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. But I went, no. Not, not that, not that. I thought it was just gonna be the same. <laughs> was, that the da- was that the dad from Empty Nest? <laughs> <laughs> what is that voice? I know that is the same. Uh, I could turn into dice all of a sudden. So yeah. it's same. It's same. It it like the, was no, dice I mean, from Empty Nest. <laughs> 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 so right, sweet, the stereotype. <laughs> yeah, and I was—that's gonna be the same thing. But she didn't. She was so different, and she and had a heart in that movie. That's yes, but she, I think she's got the same path as Robin Williams, which is what I want. Where you're so good, like there's re- few people are so, are gifted in both worlds. And like yes. I was telling her this uh, at the premiere. Look at you, uh, an uh, when, an uh, Whatever. When uh, <laughs> that the scene when she's choking up over Sandra's cat leaving. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah. like yeah. it's so much funnier because. I mean, yeah. yeah well, just, no, and that was the, that's the thing with her. She she has done that because for me, again, Identity Thief was just it, I, her character to me was a little unlikable. She's a likable person, but the character itself. So never I'm like, saw okay. Identity Thief. I've so, only been doing the show. Well, a let's months. be honest. It yeah. touched it close to home because in the seventh grade, that kid stole your your identity. <laughs> Both. And, yeah, and let's. I think are we clear to say who it is on yeah. the air? Yeah, I can say it. Yeah, it's the lawsuit's done. It's fine. Is, are you sure, Danny? Danny Pintoro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny it's Pintoro. Um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, Jonathan from Full House. He did. He well, you know what's crazy? Who's, 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 who's the boss? Who's the boss? Hey, by Sorry. the way, Sorry. I love that we were both thinking sitcom world. You know what I was going to say? Raven Simone. <laughs> Perfect. That would have been Perfect. better. Yeah. Um, but That's after the Raven so Simone Raven. fiasco, I got my shit together and I was able to watch your movie. Thank you. And so when we're watching the movie, I'm going, okay, where's Ray? Where is he? Because I yeah, they're yeah. setting it up. Yeah. We didn't know also, if you were the main bad guy. I mean, or if I'm even in the movie at this point. I mean, hey, man, if I don't show up like you're hoping like maybe like 20 seconds into the movie.
movie, I'm just going to pop in and go, I'm in it, don't worry. And I'm right. pop back <laughs> out. You get, you get a cupcake and leave. Yeah. 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 So, like, I had I, an inkling to when, when his scene's coming up. And so I was like, I was preparing. I was yeah. like, once the movie started making me laugh, I breathed a sigh of relief. And then I was like, okay, now we can just do it. And then I know Adam's scene is coming up. And it was like your third grader is about to take the stage at a recital. You're yeah, like, it's don't truth. fuck this up, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six <laughs> weeks of piano lessons. But, and what a way he gets into it. And what a way he gets into it. Because it, listen, so the thing starts out, and I don't want to spoil too much for people who haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, which is no one, Christian. And it hasn't fucking come out. That's what yet. I'm saying. So listen, God damn tonight, it. Tonight, baby. I leave. This comes out tonight. So midnight. We should all go hang out. I I listen. No? I was obsessed. No. With- <laughs> too, too big for me. Uh, too yeah. big. Too big for all Mark else. All right. Have you yeah. not seen this vest? It screams fucking. I'm too big for everybody. <laughs> Um, uh, he is wearing I, a puffer vest. I was, yep. I was oh, yeah. obsessed in the summer. It's hundred with talking. <laughs> it's comfortable as fuck. Let's move on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was obsessed with Sandra Bullock when I like for a very long time. Yeah, and and so when she so she hits the scene and I'm like, I felt that I had seen this character. Sure. Then then it starts to geniality. That's what I felt. But then yeah, but like she was more dudish in in that and like right just more goody two shoes. I'm talking about the first like five ten minutes and then. Melissa McCarthy hits and it's it's on. Yeah, and it's then on. you're just laughing the whole fucking time. And then they work together. The chemistry's unbelievable. Chemistry's great. Unbelievable. And then they hit the club. And like I said, I was so I Sandra Bullock was like my girl, you know. And then so I it see this guy. It seems like this guy, obsession of yours met the inside somewhere. of a courtroom it a did. couple times. It's about to, <laughs> and it's about to because I want to. Yeah. Wanna, what point yeah. does your hand enter your pants? I was actually smelling <laughs> your ja- no! I was smelling your jacket before. <laughs> uh, so, but again, so yes. his first scene where he pops up, he starts like grinding and dancing with Sandra Bullock. This yeah. guy yeah. in the studio yeah. right now, yes, Adam I was, Ray. Of course. He's, uh, for, uh, we don't want to say that. Super nervous, by the way. Like, like how much to touch or where to put my face. How much I should smell. So is that the first no, scene Paul that you shoot? No, Paul was just like, do anything. What's that? Is that the first scene you shoot? No, the first scene I shot the first day yeah. was when uh, I, the um, when I come up behind him with guns, when yeah, we're sneaking yeah, up yeah, on yeah. Michael, uh-huh. and I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah. backup's already here. Like, yeah. that was the first, first thing. Really? So I just met them, and then it was them coming around the corner. Oh, wow. And they're like buddy-buddy and talking, and I'm just like, eh, yeah. And, and the guy's like, make sure you hold the guns like right here because wow. they enter frame. And in yeah. my head, I'm like, man, you know, two months ago, I made a vi- uh, sketch video where I pretend to be Jay Leno during a P- doing a PSA for Burp Farts. And now I'm pointing <laughs> guns at yeah. these two oh, women. Oh, wow. So, wait, so you so had I was never super met them nervous. before? I met them briefly. The first day, it was just like they were shooting a scene in the car wow. when they first get away from... Um, Don't spoil stuff. Yeah. When they get away from the 7-Eleven that was burning down <laughs> because Gary Busey <laughs> poured kerosene on it. Oh. See, now they'll just be completely confused. Uh, yeah. No, uh, that the club scene was like the third day. So I was like... No, second day. So it was yeah. a little more comfortable because I just spent a day with them. Right. But still, but still there was all those yeah. extras. So right. it was like, and they're all looking at me like, who's that guy? And I'm you like, I'm nobody. It, Stop yeah. looking yeah. at me. When you're, when you're actually <laughs> dancing with her, how much of that stuff is improvised? Or did you guys talk about it before? Oh, or were no, you no. like, this is the take. Paul's I like, go for the boobs. Oh, he talked. He just goes, they're go- he goes, the girl's going to be dancing on you. They're going to try to pry you off. Let's see what happens. And so we shot like eight of those. That's great. And then, and after a while, he was like, all right, eventually, like, you know, she's going to get up to you, like, be backing in. Like, I sh- and she was going to be trying to reach for my phone was one of the things. And yeah. then, like, to, to make sure to bat that away. And, uh, and those girls were, like, aggressively dancing. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then, and Melissa, like, like, I mean, it was like, and it would happen for, like, ten minutes straight. And, I mean, everybody was super out of breath because it was right. just nonstop. And Melissa's grabbing these girls and throwing them and Sam's just dancing. And I'm just, like, you know, trying to be, like, what the hell's going on? Surreal. And then she gets up and me be like, yeah, Megan, yeah. And, uh, and, and it just, it just chaos. moves. It was chaos, but it was. But it I think was, it looked, but they, yeah. as soon as we did the first one, everybody was just like, that was funny. Paul was like, that was madness. It was great. Let's do it again. And, and then you have, so then, then, it, then you go, and then it's just a one-on-one with you and Sandra. Yeah. And so, and that was a, a in lot the of. the VIP impro- booth? Yeah, in the VIP booth. Yeah. So that's a lot of improv, too. Dude, they're, Christians. I mean, they're. So no, but this dude, man, not, they send me the blooper reel to approve. There's, I mean, you know, it's the bad guys can't be like super funny in this because there's no stakes to the movie. That's then, what right? I asked you. Are you guys cracking each other up the whole time? I, I mean, mean, it was like one thirty in the morning, and Paul's yeah. like, "I'm gonna give you one on you, like to just basically hit, you know, just." So I was just like, I locked in. I was just like, "All right, all this potentially could be in." So I just, I, I mean, I was saying shit like. You know, oh, it's you know, it sucks. All these girls, you know, they're always coming here hitting on me because you know, it's, they only like me because of this club. They're like, look at the Suarez, got great pants, dope hair, probably owns two laptops. You know, <laughs> I think he knows Seal. Somebody told me he knows Seal. He can freestyle rap. And at one point, we did that, and, and she goes, "Oh, you can, you can rap." And then I just stare at her for like five seconds, then just go, and I start busting out this thing, and she does this like fucking like thing where I spit in her face, and and like you know, none of that's in, but um. But uh, DVD extra man, maybe. Yeah. But I mean, that was. Uh, but and, and as we're doing that, she, um, uh, Melissa's, we're watching her at the bar, and she, her, you know, because she's just trying to bug, 
my phone the whole time. And so I was like, all right, so do we, can we like, since we're not on camera, can we just talk normally? Or, does, or like, I didn't know if I should still be in character or yeah, not. And I didn't yeah. want to like do it and have her be like, you can relax, buddy. Like, yeah. fucking, you don't want to be method. But so, uh, so they start and then she just goes, so, so uh, tell me about the club. And I was like, okay, cool. So I just start rattling all the stuff that's not on screen. Yeah. And, um, but she was pretty receptive. She was uh, encouraging. About yeah, that, what I was that's doing. really. I mean, that's the thing is again because you hear great stories about both Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy, how cool they are, and you're the type of guy. If they were an asshole, you'd say they were an asshole. So they're pretty cool people. Dude, could not have been cooler. Yeah, yeah. I remember when you were going, you were flying to Boston to shoot it, and we were hanging out at the comedy store the night before, and like ten guys are hanging around. We're just trying to put you through your face, like, dude, you're gonna sweat a lot the first day. Yeah, okay? oh, yeah get yeah. it out of your system. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know, yeah. like, you wear go that vest. And It'll be hot out there. <laughs> yeah, no one take... can see the sweat. It's, it's getting hot. <laughs> we're like which color vest, dude? Don't go orange, man. That's don't go orange. Yeah. That's, that's never, what never go orange. Not for you. They'll think you're crafty. Was there a time when you were when you were on set and you got there that you were really nervous and then something like they, then you calmed down and you yes. just settled or were you just cool as soon as you got onto? No, definitely not. Uh, you like to think that you. I mean, I wasn't as nervous as maybe I. I was for sure nervous because it's like yeah. the magnitude. Yeah, you've been, I've been on some, you know, a few TV things and Huge like been start, on sets, yeah. but yeah. like the magnitude of that and like thinking you can't help but think about like you know, um, what it could do or whatever. Yeah. And just wanting to do good and, like, be... But and then after a while, let anybody down that got Yeah, down. and make them realize that you, like, you're supposed to be there. And, like, you, <laughs> as much as you, you know, you get the part and everyone's uh, sweet right from the get-go, you're just like, I, something has to happen Still got to deliver. Yeah. 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 And so after we did the... Um, I, another thing about the club scene was, I think, the last day. But the second day, and this is what did it, was that uh, my last scene before I... Um, I won't say anything. Yeah. And yeah. then before as we're, something happens, Tiff. When they come up and they, they come to the warehouse and a bunch of guys come out and then I come out yeah. and I'm like, oh, what's up, guys? That was another day where that was the second day and I hadn't done any uh, improvising yet. And so Melissa and I, when I come out, would just start jabbing at each other, yeah. like you know, like in the movie. She's like, "What's up, Teen Wolf?" And I'm yeah. like, "Ha ha, I'm Jewish. I don't know what you mean by that." Yeah. And like we would just, and then she's like, "How many girl bracelets can you fit on your wrist?" And I'm like, six. Next fucking stupid question. And yeah. like we're just going back and forth and we like went for a while. How fun is and that? then um, it was amazing. Yeah. And then after that, like. And we did a bunch of takes, and then she just looked at me, and she was like, you're good. She's like, you're really good. And I was like, oh, fuck. All right. And that, like, settled that's, me down. Yeah, that's I was cool. Like, I feel yeah. like whenever you book something, you always have that moment of when you get on set, and you're like, someone's going to find out that I, I wasn't know. supposed to be here. I mean, yeah. For sure. That's how we feel when we're sitting in our movie screens. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. For, I mean, entirely. Which is, is I put in a couple sucks, calls to the production company, and I'm like, no, you got to get Ray off your set. That's it. This, is not, this is not the way you want He it. thinks he's high and mighty because according to Jim was eight years ago. <laughs> No, but like, you know. How many times has he referenced Small Wonder? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he still wearing that Goonie shirt? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so it's just. It, but it's, it's, it does suck that you, But I mean, it makes you raise your game a little bit to be that cautious. But at the same time, you're like, why can't I just relax and enjoy this from the get go? Yeah. But um, but I guess that that's also what makes you the professionals. The fact that you, you're sitting sure. here and you're ready to go. And, and again, you you have you have that background and the comedy chops and your videos, too. You That's got, I mean, coming oh, yeah, from all that the YouTube world. Helped. So, yeah. like, you, because you, you do come from the YouTube world as well, too. So you're able but you, you, all your skits, and you still running your channel? Yeah, yeah. So Adam yeah, Ray yeah. Comedy? AdamRayTV.com. AdamRayTV.com. So go check out. Uh, AdamRayFunnyBusiness.org? Is yeah. that what it is? There's, again, and I watch. That's, that's most hosts at most comedy clubs. This next guy got a website. When that was like my credit, I used for all the big. This oh, next yeah. guy's got a bunch of videos on AdamRayTV.JewBest. Uh, <laughs> what is it, man? And I was like, no, just, just bring me up, man. Yeah. Um, so I mean, so again, you can have, and you, you do all, you did a lot of the of the skits on your channel, so you can, see, and you're constantly improving. So in fact, you could see, I knew it too, because from having you on the show before, when you guys were going back and forth, like it was like a Ninja Turtle line. That oh, was, yeah. I mean, again, well, that's yeah. just me trying to get, you know, that's just pop culture, uh, too much of an obsession in trying to <laughs> get that in there. But they, uh, and, and like selfishly, yeah, like the first time I saw it, I was like, God, I'm fucking, mo- I said much funnier shit than that. But like, you know, what do you like? Right. Fucking. Um, you know, I used to watch Flight of the Navigator wanting to be in that yeah. spaceship. Yeah. So I'm watching myself being like, okay, don't complain about anything right now. <laughs> so, so what are you, I'm not so cut out. You go, like, you go to the premiere yeah. and you're watching. And so you're shitting in your pants before because you've never seen the movie before. So you No, not, I saw it at, uh, on Fox uh, the lot like maybe four months ago. Okay. But okay. I couldn't enjoy it because I was just weirded out by watching and I was super critical of myself. Listening to the crowd. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah and yeah. I was just like. Stand up in mind, too. Yeah, yeah. Was just, yeah, was Did he not, still have the beard? Yeah, when did you get no. rid of the beard? What was up with the beard? As soon as I was that Paul, was that Paul Faye? Yeah, who's, who's no, choice? No, I, 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 I was like, I'm going to grow out the beard and my hair to give him some options, you know? Yeah. And then I get out there and I walk down there and they, somebody walks me down. And they're like, so Paul, because I'm thinking maybe he can, like, you know, shave it into something yeah. really douchey, like a goatee or something. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have a goatee in there? Nope. All right, you just got that. That's fine. You look good. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, so I get down there and he, and he just goes, they go,
But uh, yeah, no, I mean the day after, because clean shaven like this, I wouldn't. I mean, this is still not like a non douchey look. But um, but if I shave, I'm off glad great. you said you it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, but I mean, I, the day after I shaved because it just got itchy and um, I just didn't uh, like it. It's time to go. Yeah. It's time to go. It's time but to go. my uh, and I've told a story uh, already. Uh, um, my mom was like, "You should grow the beard out when you go on Ferguson because they're not going to know." That it's you from the movie. They're not going to recognize you. And I was like, Mom, they show a clip from the movie and say my name before it comes. She's like, all right, well, well, you know, okay. You you roll the dice how you want to. Yeah, exactly. She's like, oh, yeah, you could take a chance, but, or you could, you know, spoon feed them the information. Well, did, um. She was, I mean, and she, I took her down the uh, carpet. Okay. And uh, she was all about it and talking to And she's, uh. She's telling me to stand. Sandra's, you know, she meets Sandra, Melissa, and and, and people on the red carpet. And then afterward, at the party, uh, Ben Affleck was there for whatever reason, because New York and I guess, you know, all those people that go to parties like that. And so she's just so good. And she's really sweet and personable. So she, I know she's not going to embarrass me. Or whatever Your she mom does. or Sandra? My mom. Oh, okay. All right. No. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, don't embarrass me, Bullock. Yeah. <laughs> it's my first one. Uh, you already fucked up the dancing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you say the dancing or the dancing? Both. Uh, yeah. And so my mom, she goes, uh, I see Ben Affleck. She's like, I want to talk to him. I go, Mom, just tone it down a notch. Like, you know, she's like, I want to get a picture. And she loves him so much. It's not like she's just like a star. Like, I want pictures with celebrities. Like, right. yeah. she really Specific- loves him. Ben yeah. yeah, and so uh, so I'm like, all right, I'm trying to you know uh, balance between a buddy of mine who uh, drove up from D.C. that was there <laughs> that I've known since fifth grade, and my uh, a couple of my agents and my mom and stepdad, and then people that I from the movie that I don't get to talk to a lot, like Melissa and Bill Burr. It was like an excuse to actually have a conversation yeah. with them. Yeah. My and, uh, son was the one with the beard. That's exactly yeah. what she did to everybody. No. She goes up to Marlon Wayans, who couldn't have been sweeter to her. He was yeah. like, oh yeah, your boy's cool as she. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, and whatever. And uh, and uh, takes a picture, and she introduces everyone. And then so she goes up, she comes back, she goes, I just talked to Ben Affleck. Like 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, God, like, what happened? What did you she say? went up by herself. Oh, she yeah. just went in. Oh, no, Why Geely? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Fuck. And so then she's like, but George, my stepdad, she goes, messed up the picture. And I was like, all right, well, you know, and then I see him kind of standing nearby me. I was like, all right, this woman, you know, made me work three jobs, you know, when, when I was younger. Like, she, at least I can do is get another picture. Yeah. So I'm like, well, was he at the screening? Because if I just go up as a nobody, I mean, still being a nobody, like, I don't want to. And they're like, yeah, he was in the screening. So I go, hey, Ben. And I go, uh, I was in the I movie. Had a beard. I had the beard. That's yeah. exactly what I said. I go, I had to get those the nightclub owner with the beard. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. And I goes, oh, yeah, good job, man. It was good. And I go, cool. And as soon as he said that, I wanted to be like, hey, man, so in Google Hunting, did you guys like what? Because <laughs> I was like, oh, the gates have been open for a conversation. Yeah. But I was just like, hey, man, my mom's a big fan. Like, do you mind getting my stepdad fucked up the picture? He goes, stepdads are always fucking it up, man. And then he goes, <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And then he took, uh, took another yeah, picture. That's cool. Him. Oh. Yeah, so I mean, again, that's that's something that, again, your mom being a big Ben Affleck fan. Yeah. And what, what, I mean, just a, that's I mean, really cool. You know, and super proud. Was super nice to her. Do you have uh, brothers and sisters? Yeah, uh, yeah, one sister, uh, stepsister, stepbrother, two half brothers. So you're like the star of the show right now. <laughs> I mean, they're all proud. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, she, you're, you're, I still have nieces that are four that still, you know, are you know when they color something, that's definitely way more impressive. Right. Well, right. If they or if they put the a lines, sentence together. That's kind of, yeah, big Hollywood movie, I stayed in the fucking line. Yeah, yeah, man. they don't shit their pants. That's still more impressive than me being in a movie. No, dude, this, yeah, I mean, again, yeah. this is really, this was a lot of fun to see you in this, because you, well, you were man. really great in the movie. And well, thanks, uh, it was fun. Is we it, were, is we it were nerve-wracking, to... like, because now you're in kind of the limelight, you're just soaking up all this, this hard work that you've done to get to this point, but when you audition for the movie... And you, you get callbacks, and you yeah. go in, and you're like, oh, I think I got it, or no, th- this was definitely the one where I lost it. No, How I mean, that process go? I think, I, I, I've, I think I've gotten to a point where I've just, I prepare myself well for them, so, like, I, I, I don't, I, you know, a good percentage of them, I walk out feeling like I did, like, my part, like, as best as I could do, and then it's just, yeah. I, and then I've lost on so many that I'm conditioning myself to just be like, Forget and that's it. why stand-up and other shit is great, that I walk out, and yeah, sometimes you torture yourself for a little bit where you're like, God, maybe I should have said one thing better, but like it yeah. felt good. And you just have to leave it because I've tortured myself over things like wanting it so bad. Right. And so with this one, uh, as soon as I saw it was, you know, Sarah and Melissa, I was like, oh, fuck, another great thing that I'm probably not going to get. But Allison Jones had gone in for her for five years. She loves me. And, and uh, whatever, go and see what happens. And I did one. And then um, Spoken Reasons, the kid who was... Um, that's uh, what I was just gonna, I was just yeah, gonna ask you. Hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. And uh, they, Kevin Hart was supposed to do that originally, and uh, then Spoken he, Reasons was good. He was great. He's a YouTube guy, and I didn't never know, acted before. And you know what's funny is so I didn't even funny. know he was I'll a YouTube you get him guy. On that would be great yeah. because I didn't know. Uh, and our, we just did the review, and all the comments were, "What about Spoken Reasons?" And yeah. I'm like, and I started looking at his channel. He's a giant just, channel, yeah. Because the, he's a giant channel, yeah. but the, I didn't know that he was on YouTube and. When I'm watching the movie, I'm like, this kid's good. Oh, yeah. Man. He, no, was he was funny. He was dude. great. Yeah, yeah. He was asking me when we had uh, one day where we were doing some stuff together, and he, uh, 
uh, he was like, man, I got this audition for this Tom Cruise movie, and like, I was like, should I like, I gotta put myself on tape, but I was gonna shoot this whole like sketch, like this really like, and he was talking about a really elaborate like short film. Yeah. I was like, I mean, you don't have, you definitely don't, you probably shouldn't do. But I was like, <laughs> I don't want to tell you not to do that yeah. because like maybe that'll get you the job. I was like, but yeah. they're not expecting that at all. But he just is so you know foreign That's to yeah, it. He's, he's on YouTube though. He, yeah, yeah, he's he's really funny. Um, so, yeah, but but two uh, shit. Um, Sorry. So you read for the part. You read no, no, for yeah. the part. No, so I went, no, so I went for that part because after the Kevin Hart dropped out, they were like, oh, maybe it'll be a white guy to be. Yeah. Like, and so, yeah. And then did that, and then and that was good. And then um, and you wouldn't, back. they would not be able to hold you off that balcony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> know, it's, well, because the vest weighs a lot. Yeah. But um, so then I uh, then I went in for the my part, the the last one. And so and like and Paul was telling me, he's like, yeah, we liked first audition, so we just wanted to try to find something. And I was like, thank you, so I don't have to work at the theme park anymore. <laughs> thank you. I almost started crying. Do you want to tell everybody in case they don't know what you were at Universal Studios? Uh. Well, I was a tour guide for oh well, Wolverine. I guess that's yeah. most the Wolverine. Yeah, dressed it up. I was yeah. a tour guide. You were fucking Wolverine, Wolverine. and you had adamantium claws. Do the claw thing. Do yeah. the claw thing. <laughs> you know what happened one day? Uh, I don't think I've ever told I feel a story. Like he hesitated. He was like, "I'm gonna do it." No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but like they they always told me not to like you know uh, jing jing the claws together. Snicky but it made snick. such snicky snick. But it made such yeah. a cool sound. And I was like, because you take a picture, and I was just always like, you know, do that, and then like do that, and some fucking man, Wolverine face, and uh, my voice was cooler. And uh, <laughs> but so one of the um, the uh, PAs, the people that like make sure that people don't, you know, that Asian men don't fucking like kill you, which would happen. They're so aggressive, by the way. Like you think that's a stereotype? So aggressive. I got Asian beat with umbrellas. To, yeah, uh, sort of heavy set Latino women. And so, um, but so this guy, uh, I do the claw thing, and it's a big, it's a big group photo. Captain America's there, Spider Man, and one of those rare rom- moments where the whole crew is there for a photo, and everyone's in line. And I do the claw thing, and like six of them just fucking pl- like rip off and hit the wow. ground. You heard a collective gasp, as if like it was like a you moment. Killed it's like it's like on, no Santa Claus. Like yeah, that or like on Full House, if like Mary Kate was on stage and then Ashley walked out and was like, "I'm the other one," you know, like everyone like a big reveal yeah. moment yeah. where kids are like, "Why did they fall off?" There's a clone. One's good, one's oh, dude, bad. Yeah. They, yeah. Huh. they, they do. grow out like regular. Yeah. 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 It's mystique. It's mystique. So somebody does a radio. They were like, "Code four, code four. Wolverine claws have fallen off <laughs> his hands," and they immediately grab me and like, like you gotta get no, on set." And like rush me service? off. And in my head, I'm like, "You guys." It's not a big deal, but the yeah. kids were like, "What's going That's on?" Oh, Wait, amazing. did someone yeah. run out and get the claws, or they were just like sitting there sadly? Over yeah, there. somebody picked them up real quick. I mean, that's hilarious. Some kid has a Wolverine claw. Well, I have a question also because another thing that I'm sure is in your mind, and I'm probably a dick for bringing it up. No, no. Uh, no. Now you, you got to start thinking about box office, obviously. Like, it, it, and, you know, I, I do. I, don't I, think, I mean, I, I don't think you, I don't think you worry about it on as far as because I'm thinking about Melissa my next McCarthy. job. No, but I mean, but yeah, move, you're right. I'm saying I want it to do well because if it does well, then that's what I'm saying. More eyes and stuff on you. But I think, look, Melissa McCarthy. And Sandra Bullock, and because the movie's funny, I think you're in good shape. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, and it's going up against White House Down, which uh, if people have already seen, audience. they've already seen the White House blow up once this year. Yeah. They haven't seen. <laughs> also, like you're not going to top when it blew up in Independence Day, if we yeah. can be quite no. honest. It's the no. truth. And they don't. They try it. I mean, guys, that's not a comedy, though, is it? Uh, there's comedic well, moments, yeah. but not not no, like, it's not like, more like hey, there were comedic style. moments in Flight of the Navigator. That's so very true. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, make sure Too you check out. Twinkies. Yeah, make Too sure you t- check, <laughs> check Yo, out. Paul Rubens was the voice of. He uh, sure was. Yeah. Of, uh, ah, compliance. Right, compliance. <laughs> make sure you check out Fuck. The Heat. It is going to be out midnight tonight. Oh, yeah. Check out Adam Ray in The Heat with Sandra Bullock, Melissa McCarthy. Really, really funny movie. But He's the guy with the beard in the movie. Yeah, he's the guy with the beard. No problem explaining it is that. Or he's the guy sitting next to you wearing a vest. I'm we're getting, with we're, no beard. Now, now we're getting tweets. We're getting tweets all over the board that we're supposed to have another guest in, and he's he's not here yet. But it, we keep getting tweets. tweets uh, Johnny, dude. Hmm. Yeah, I think that there's some, there's something there's something on. happening. Apparently, there's someone's. There it is. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, wait, it looks there like it's is. another edition of Tony Danza, Alf, and Arnold. Oh God! Hey, you mind if I sing my song real quick? Hey, turn it up there for a second. There are times that you've got an inkling for drugs, so you go out late to find them. But you end up at a Denny's IHOP combination. I wish those existed. I was drunk 16 days ago and stole the plane and flew to Mexico. Where'd that kid go? Anyway, 
<laughs> Listen, I, I've got to, I got to tell you, it was it was a fantastic rendition of the song. I couldn't have sang it better myself. Well, you know, it was my show, so I should be able to sing it well. Good to see you, Arnold. No, by nice the way. to see you as well. And listen, last time we were here, we were talking about my pussy eating friend here, Alf. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, hey he, guys, he's back. Well, you here. love that stuff. Don't hey, you? where's Mona? I need some old pussy. Whoa, uh, I, I get was, what you're doing. I was there. talking about the feline, and you had to go dirty. Cut it out. Uh, she's uh, got one I life was, left. Yeah, Come she, on, yeah, guys. Yeah, you know, the smooth had to leave for a second, so they wanted to ask you about your new movie, Don Juan, that you have with the Gordon Levitt. Oh, did Joseph? Golden Levitt, that kid's yeah. incredible. First of all, you know, he started in uh, in uh, Fifth Fifth Rock from the Planet. Right. Hey, that was Mel Mac. It's a fantastic. It was. How, now, how close was Joseph Gordon Levitt to you growing I up? I can't as a child? talk about it. Mel Mac exploded. Oh yeah. I was just like Joseph Gordon Levitt's career. Yeah. That's a great. That's. <laughs> That's a great segue, Mr. Danza. Yeah, yeah. No, but the movie's great. Well, you know, it's uh, it's a great film. It's I play his uh, his father. No, what uh, is this? Apparently, Johansson. he's a sex he's a sex addict as well, right? He yeah, he's addicted to porn. Which, uh, hey, Arnie, you know what that's like, huh? Oh, yeah, I used to fuck my maid. Uh, now I want to ask you. Yeah, a bunch are you of still questions. fucking her, by the way? Yeah, are you still fucking her? Well, it depends when the cameras are not on them. It's it's, it's, uh, all, yeah, it's all yeah, apparent. Yeah. You know how yeah. I'm the same. Did you guys ever film it? Oh, a couple of times. There was a there was one time we had the son-in-law, and he took the he took the 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 camera, and he said, put it. There. And I said, no, put it there. Yeah. And then the next thing we did a dance, we put on, I put on the dress. Oh, it was hot. fantastic. You saw yeah. some guy in the Sounds background. Fantastic. He was playing the banjo. Sure. You don't know what to do. It's a great instrument. Thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, I wanted to ask you a question. I have a friend here that I didn't tell Alpha was going to bring here. And oh, he, yeah. He wants to ask you a question as sure. well. Hey! Gary, come here. Gary Coleman? Uh, I've been to a bunch of places. My name is uh, Gary Busey. And, uh, hey, I, you're the guy from Point Break. Hey, you're the guy from Tommy Boy. I, I mean, Black Sheep. I've been in a couple of Black Sheep in the last 24 hours. Oh. Uh, I, am, I am wondering. Well played. Uh, Tony Danza, yeah. what, how many times have you seen the inside of a fish gut? Well, <laughs> <laughs> look at that lip quiver. I believe that fish guts can tell you why Jesus has walked on the moon. Why would Arnold bring this guy? This is so weird. I'm going to put him back in his cage. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, we're that, talking, was, yeah he, that was super weird. He's unbelievable. Hey, Sometimes what's Keanu Reeves like? I don't know. He's, he's gone. We've put him in the cage. Listen, Tony, one more thing before you leave. Yeah. Can you tell me anything about Angela and why she's not around anymore? Yeah, well, Angela, uh, well, she's got a one-woman show on Broadway called uh, Hey, Hey, I Was Kind of a Boss, Too. <laughs> and uh, and uh, its ticket sales are not selling well. It's at a small theater off-off Broadway. Oh, you know one of those off-off Broadway theaters where, like, it's not even, like, it's like upstate New York. It's like it's like a casino. I think I've been there once or when I showed her that Judith, this is my light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, no, I, I do know what you're saying. She right. told me about it. It's right. in the show, by the way, which well, you should probably see. Uh, you. You're fucking your maid. <laughs> All right, guys, Adam Ray from The Heat, oh. Schmoes No Podcast, Alf is here. Guys, make sure you check Alf out The Heat. Adam, I, I want to apologize to the two girls that we have on right now. I feel like girls I was just in an alternate yeah. universe. Like some, I stepped through surreal. some yeah. door and yeah. didn't know yeah. that I did it. Yeah. It was a lot it's of fun. Uh, great having you on the show, Dude, buddy. Adam, we've been, yeah, we've been pals a long time. Yeah, yeah. You've come a long way from no. huffing whipped cream cans in La Jolla. Right <laughs> yeah. now. So, uh, Dude, really excited for you. Congratulations, guys. Very cool. All right, guys, Adam Ray. Check him out at Adam Ray Comedy on Twitter, and we'll be back in a little bit with Ralea, Ralea Vanderbilt. I got your name. Didn't call you Rachel. Rihanna. Sorry. Uh, Tiffany Rihanna. Smith, Christian Olaf, Mark Ellis. And Most me, Elf. I'm and still Elf. here. Oh, I've been. Uh, it's the Schmo's No Podcast. Happy and joyful. Johnny, which one is this? This is, again, music all by chosen from Schmoville. We ask every uh, Wednesday or Thursday, we ask you guys to pick the music for the podcast. And you guys suggest scores. We listen to all you guys. What is this one, Johnny? Oh, this is from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is a great, great choice. So thank you for all the suggestions. Uh, Adam Ray was on the show. My God, that guy's a funny dude. Really happy for, for everything going on with him. He deserves it. He's really one of like the, the nice, the really nice guys out there. So um, support the movie. Check it that out. That vest it's was awesome. It, he did, listen, I think that, he was from Old Navy. He's a, he's a funny dude. He's, he was he's, 100% down. <laughs> it is 90 degrees outside right now He's wearing a down vest yeah, listen, I mean when you're as cool as him I guess You can pull it off He yeah. pulled it off man So uh, again guys that was it, was it was a lot of fun talking to Adam It was nice to see Tony Danza and Gary Busey get along <laughs> um, Now here's what we're going to do with Schmoville right now Because I have Mark Riley Our editor in chief with, with the headphones on Listening right now I want to hear from you guys About the website So I want you guys To call in at 323-622-8623 
What have you been, the website's been on now for about a month. So what are your thoughts on the website? What articles have you really liked? What writers are you enjoying? Uh, give us your feedback on the website because we want to get you guys are the ones that are listening and, we, we, and reading and everything too. The, uh, and it's really been a lot of fun reading all your feedback. So let's take a couple calls from Schmoville. Hear what you think about the website. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, Christian. What's up? It's Tony. Tony, you've been spending some time on the uh, on on the website. What do you think? What do you got so far? I have. I spent uh, some time uh, here and there. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great website. Uh, it's you know you guys in uh, Spo.com are the only uh, movie sites that I uh, check out every day. So uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Thank you. So how often it's how brilliant. often do you uh, do you visit the site uh, daily? Would you say? At least uh, I don't know three four hours a day. Great. Uh, so that's okay. Good. So thank you, Tony, for being part of the uh, the audience, man. Because we're really enjoying all the feedback. Yeah, Tony. Danza? No, not Tony Danza. No, oh, Tony, 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 Tony from Santa Barbara. He's calling up. We're talking about the website. Thank you, Tony. So we're talking about the website. Uh, thoughts on what what people think. What you know, articles and stuff that they've read that they've enjoyed. What writers or whatnot. So hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey guys, Georgie. Georgie. So Georgie. Jo Georgie, I know you've been spending some time on the site, my man. Oh, dude. I'm on there all the time. Being unemployed, one of the benefits of that is having your site at Thanks. the moment. So <laughs> what, what are you enjoying about Because there are a lot of uh, entertainment sites out there and a lot of uh, movie sites. What, what are you enjoying about the site um, that, you know, again, that we, can, uh, that we can kind of promote and tell people about so they can catch on to it as well? Well, I, I think the, the big thing with, with your guys' site is really just the big thing with your overall you know everything you do, and that it's that it's a community. You can link into Facebook and talk to your buddies about stuff, and then people who see your post, um, like my post on my Facebook page, wind up going to your site, and so everything links into the Schmoes community as well as you know your friends just from from outside, you know Schmoe, which is which is really great, and i got to hand it to Riley, man. That guy's on top of He's it. He's kicking it's, ass. It's, it's he, pretty fantastic. He really yeah. is. So, so you're enjoy, are you enjoying are, – you, now, you've been checking out, like, the other articles. Are there certain writers that you've been checking out on the site that you that you have any uh, ones that you enjoy reading a lot? Well, I mean, Riley's pretty much on, on there – on there the most, you know, I, I, I Don't love Don't get too big stuff. of a head here, George. I He's really, already walking around like I he really, owns the place. <laughs> uh, I really like uh, uh, Joe's stuff. I really like – Joe, the stuff Joe writes. Yeah, when Joe, um, when Joe posts, it's good. The stuff he reports ain't bad either. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, Georgie. Yeah, no problem, guys. All right. Let's take let's take a couple more calls. I'm really curious about like what people are thinking about the site and what they're. Uh, Again, like any things that they love, things that they want to see more of, that kind of stuff. It's hey. your comment box. That's right. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, what's up, guys? It's Raul calling in from Boston. Raul, what's up, Hi. dude? Calling from Boston. I love it, man. Late late night over there. So, what? So, Raul, have you been, have you been spending some time on the site? Oh yeah, it's like crack from my computer. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really nice to hear, dude. So, what uh, what are you, what are you enjoying about the site? What articles you're liking? That that kind of stuff. Just to so we kind of get a feedback because I really want to know how Schmoville is responding to the site because it's amazing how many of you guys are visiting now and we and we cannot be we're so thankful. So, what do you like about it? I mean, I love the fact how you guys have everything all integrated, like, with the whole Facebook thing and everything. And, like, every story, like, I read, like, every time I see, like, a new story, it's like, must read now. <laughs> it's, like, mandatory. Good. Thanks. It really is like crack for you. Though. It is. No, I, I, dude, listen, I appreciate that so much. It is. It's like, come on, come on, what's my next fix? What's my next fix? Come on, give me this. <laughs> that's, well, the, that's the Southie good. crack boy. That's I'm right. Really well, sure. that well, there, noise there, just there will be were those words, and there'll be tons more of it, dude. So thank you again. I mean, this is really this. Thank you for the call, dude. There's this more really, crack coming again. Um, hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Leanne from Jersey. How you guys doing? Hey, Leanne, what's Hi. up? So, Hi, do you um, so uh, Leanne, you've been spending some time on the site, and uh, we, you know, obviously we put a lot of your posters up there, and things yep. that you've been that you've done for us, and we can't thank you enough for all the stuff that you've done for us. So, what what are you? I mean, because you're a big movie fan, what what is it about the site that again that you like, don't like, that you think we should do more of, less of? I think that the coolest thing about it is that it's it's easy to get around it. You know what I mean? If I want to find something, I can find it. If I want to read about comic books or if I want to read about movies or if I want to just, you know, read about, trail, you know, trailers or whatever, it's just, it's there and it's easily obtained. You know, too many sites just spend too much time putting all this other bullshit on it that you don't need. And, you know, y'all just 
put everything in such a great way that you could just get what you need instantaneously instead of screwing around with it. Great. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Thank you. And that's that's kind of the goal that we were that we were you know going for. And Riley again has really been instrumental in why the the site is as good as it is. So thank you, Leanne. I appreciate you visiting it, and thank you for everything you've done for uh, for Schmoville. Oh, it's my pleasure, guys. You know I love you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's take. I want to see. You know, there's there's anything that maybe they think we can improve on or anything. I have a complaint. We need a store where you can buy Kenny suits. Like, yeah, I know. Kenny wears on the show. You should be able to buy the next day. That's true. Dance on Schmo's No Dime with, with the sweat in it. You're All right, gonna hey. like the way you look. I guarantee you. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Uh, hello, I'm here. Hey, yeah. How are you? Who do we got? Uh, Jess from Australia. Hey man, what's going on? So you have you so in uh, this is so in Australia, are you checking out the site, dude? Um, yeah, I'm looking at it. It's pretty good. Thanks. Good. What so are you so are the, how old are you, can I ask? I'm fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, so good. That's and that's what I love about it too, because again, we have people of all different ages that are enjoying the site, and I like that you know you can tell that there's different. Like you can enjoy it. It's not too fourteen years old, and he gets this website. When I was fourteen, you had to wait all day to get one picture of Cindy Crawford <laughs> on your computer. So what? So do you do you go there for movie news? Do you go there for trailers? What what do you what are you going to the site for primarily? For um. Mostly everything. I just like to listen to what you guys got to say, and it's just interesting to read about. That's really nice, man. Thank you so much, and thank you for calling in from Australia. What time is it there right now? Uh, it's 2.40. P.M.? Next Tuesday. Yep. Great. Okay, it's well, enjoy your day. Today. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks, <laughs> thanks Somehow a lot, it's too. Tuesday in Australia. Right, now now you feel bad about what you said about the truck on cars, don't you? No. Why? Why do I feel bad? He's 14. He's 14. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. So you should know what a dildo face car is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who Christian. do we got? What? Last call. Last call. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Hey, it's Joseph from Australia. Wow, Australia well, in the I house. Like so Joseph, you, Joseph, so you've so been bad. so Joseph, you spend a lot of time on the site as well. What are you what are you going there for? Are there things that you like, things that we should improve? What do you got for us? Yeah, well, um, the great thing about the site is um there's two things I could really say about the site. One, it's a very community-based thing. So when I see someone like post something about the website on like Facebook, I like I go check out the news and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. And then you go to the comments section, you get to talk with people, just debate about the news. The other thing I think I got to say about the website that I really go commend it for is it's just it's and the answer this before it's really easy to use. It's probably the most easy to use movie news site that I've been on. Like, it's just really structured well. You go to, like, the new, movie news tab. It's just all the news is there. And you can just easily scroll down, find what you want, pick it, and just read. And it's really awesome. So you guys done a really good job. And I've got to give credit to Mark Riley because, and Joe Ruggiero as well because those Riley. two have just such a good job. Yeah. Mark, Mark, Riley, Mark Riley's dancing right now. <laughs> that, that wasn't yeah. dancing. He was actually playing I, bass. I was no. high-five. I, 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 I thought it was a leprechaun I, jig. I, but... I, I kid, I kid. Joe, <laughs> Joe's, been, Joe's been doing a really good job, too. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for the call. Really nice. Um, one more call and then get oh, the Saturn man, right, you're okay. taking a lot right. of calls, dude. Right, right, right. No more calls. All you're right, really no patting yourself right. on the back here. No, 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 no. It's not about that. I want to know because the thing is, too, what, what's been going on with the website as well is that we're getting a lot of uh, comments and more people are talking about movie stories, and it really helps us get a feel of, like, the news and what people are like. And so, you're right. We should it's awesome, but it's like, yeah, welcome back yeah. to the Schmoes. Now we're going to pat ourselves on the back no, for that's 30 the, minutes. No, that's, that's not what it I was. Know, no, I, know. I, I really wanted to get a feel of, of, of We're really excited, man. This is our new toy. It is. So, anyway, now, something that happened there to now we're talking about the saturn awards mm -hmm. we sent the wild man josh mccuga out there to because they they set us up and on the jti, and JTI. Yeah. well we, we originally was just josh mccuga so we yeah. got jti jti sent me the uh the audio and it just it didn't work out so what we're gonna do is wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> what does not work out it, he got because it, we have video of it that we're gonna put on schmo plus and the website yeah, video <laughs> tends to hurt without the audio though no but the the but it's he he did he did some macgyver thing and it just sounded terrible it just he got Stick your face on that on that one, but where Ken is. What so, happened at the Saturn? Was anybody at the Saturn Awards? I was. You were oh, at the right? Saturn okay, Awards. So yeah. what, how was? Let's hear about Friday. Did first. you see this this guy there? I feel like I did. Totally. You did? Yeah, you were one of the first people I talked to, right? Were you in the Last. sun? No. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, did we interview her? Did not get her. Oh, oh. really nice. The, problem Good with research. The, the thing with the Saturn Awards is you're interviewing one person, and literally three people will pass you as you're interviewing someone. Well, because, true, like, there's so many people on the press line, like, so it just gets backed up, and if 
every person spends five Wait, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so well, I, I want to talk to someone who was actually invited <laughs> to yeah, the awards. Right. Yeah, but you were invited to the awards. Yeah. So he was just interviewing feet. Um, so did you? So how did um, how did you enjoy the awards? What what went down? Can you give us a little? Can you paint the picture a little bit? Um, I mean. I really love the Saturn Awards. Uh, you know, for anyone who doesn't know, the Saturn Awards basically um, is an award show. It's basically a, the Academy Awards of the horror, the sci-fi, sci and fantasy, the yeah. fantasy. Even yeah. though there's some shows that I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? Breaking Bad, love the show. Mm -hmm. Is it? Does it fall yeah. into those three characters? Well, uh, Bri Bri well, is Brian Cranston rumored to possibly be playing Lex Luthor. I know that the other one was uh, Mark I mean, Strong. but yeah. That's yeah. great, but yeah. when Breaking Bad <laughs> is winning everything, it's kind of like, I don't know I am that, the one who knocks. Is yeah. that horror? Is that, I don't Yeah, I don't it doesn't really make sense. Um, it's kind I of like how sit, I met your wait, mother. Are you guys ready for this? Yep. I got to sit and eat dinner next to Flash Gordon. Just saying. Oh, Sam Jones. Sam Jones, That's man. so cool. good. So awesome. Is he, is, he, uh, is he out of his mind? He is the <laughs> nicest guy. Well, but is he out of his mind? I don't think so. Okay. I think he is just the coolest guy. And I'm That's like, awesome. Oh, my God. It's Flash Gordon. What kind I of love of, that he's got props now because of Ted. Yeah, he, yeah. He, was, yeah. he would Does have he been sad if you saw him two years bear? ago. He just walk around with a stuffed bear. Oh. Oh. With a Flash Gordon shirt on the Ted bear. What are they, uh, what are they serving for dinner there at the Saturn mm. Awards? And is it an open bar situation? What's the deal with drinks? Uh, you weren't there. They, you was sent it, an intern there. Bar. Yeah, I mean, they have was. like a reception beforehand. Yeah. J.J. Abrams is going to be there. You give open bar. Can I hear the answer? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but they serve the same thing every year, basically. It's like broiled chicken and... A salad and some cheesecake. What is that attitude? It's free, right? Well, oh, it's the same shit again this year at yeah. the Saturn Awards. Well, what's funny is yesterday was my anniversary, and so oh, my husband cool. he's like, "Well, we could go, or we don't have to go." And then I was like, "I guess we can go." And he's like, and then the entire night I just teased him. I was like, "So this is my anniversary. You just take me to the Saturn Awards because it's a free dinner. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for taking me out." Yeah. So it was a lot of fun, though. It was, I loved it. Cool. I, I love it. it. It's a it's a great community. Everyone is really excited about all the things that we're excited about about genre filmmaking and um it's there's just less pomp and circumstance that with other award shows well and leanne just tweeted in our own our former co-host katie sackoff just uh won an award last night apparently too what? that's what she said for best female co-host on a podcast yeah, for, yeah. Yes. Best female co-host for four months yeah. 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 tiffany you'll get nominated yeah you will Take a breath. you will you will yeah. a lot of bling uh, tonight tiffany just waiting so yeah. we sent makuga we sent makuga and jti to go and they interviewed a bunch of people and we got some good ones we got keith david which i'm very yes. excited about we're gonna put that all this stuff will be on schmo plus and the website so be, when we don't know but it'll With be soon working video mm -hmm. and audio so Makuga tells me that you have a, f a story that you want that we should tell. Oh, geez. Yeah, um, Makuga was doing great. Grabbing people, getting some great questions out there. He was a lot funnier than I feel like any of the reporters around us. Yeah. And uh, I was trying not to crack up while shooting the videos. That's uh, very professional, but, Josh. Yeah, let me Josh. tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Makuga was on a mission to talk to Mike from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. who doesn't love that guy? Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like, I want to see anybody from Breaking Bad. Brian Cranston. And we got uh, RJ Mitty, and super nice guy, came in, interviewed with us. And we had another guy afterwards, and he was a producer who worked on like some sci-fi films, did a lot of makeup. Yeah. And uh, then we had another guy who did talk about the Born Legacy. He was a producer. Yeah. And Makuga was interviewing him, and I saw Mike come right past Makuga and was being interviewed by the person next to us. And I'm like, okay, wrap it up, Makuga, wrap it up. Let's get yeah. let's get to Mike. Did you give him the finger? No, I, I he, my back's to me. You can't see me, so I start like poking him on the shoulder, uh, but, but while holding the camera. Uh, so like, I don't want to like embarrass this producer yeah. guy and be so, like, we're done with so you. So I'm literally like. Trying to tap him on his shoulder, like I'm basically Should playing a doctor him. on his yeah. back. Like I'm just like, come on! Yeah. And then literally ten seconds before he stopped, Mike uh, got up and just walked right into uh. the building. And then McCook is still not aware. Uh. He's like, he ends. He goes, oh, he's like, oh man, I was good. I was like. Mike was just right next to you. I was like, did you hear me poking? He was like, I just thought it was this girl behind me. Like, <laughs> poking her into me. I was like. Because that's normal. Yeah. I thought that it was this random girl. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just trying to be professional. Probably. I'm what? zoning in. One of his tweets, he tweeted out. I got to bring it up. He's, he, this, apparently some woman was driving in bananas yeah. on the uh, on the red carpet. Where, and was she like telling him that you guys were in her space the whole time? She, I feel like that happens a lot. That happens life. a lot. Uh, you're, you're in my space. space. You're in my space. Yeah. You're still in my space. I mean, when you first get there, there's a number yeah. and the numbers were basically like packed onto each other. It yeah. was like far and away when you're running for that land rush. That's why I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't shower to get to when I do red carpet. He couldn't stand this lady. He, I mean, yeah. apparently he was nice to her to me and she started being like, she was kind of rude and stuff. And he said, this is this was his tweet. Right. Yeah. They stuck me next to Barney. 
<laughs> she has hairy arms, bad breath, and wheezes when oh. she talks. And he and he has a picture of himself standing next to her. It's I mean he did yeah, not I, like he did. Yeah. There's a Vine video. You there's a Vine. It. Yeah, yeah. I shot that Vine. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh yeah. So that wasn't nice, but it was funny. She um, was uh, basically roadblocking a lot of our uh, guests. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So she was one of those people who was like bumping everyone and away. And she to had get, like a so I can see 1999 off. little video camera. Oh great. So yeah, <laughs> I was understand. Like, Barney the purple cock block. So who did we who did we get uh, interview wise that Schmoville can see that that's worth Watch. Oh, Colin uh, Trevorrow, which I believe that's how you pronounce his name. The guy who's going to be doing Jurassic Park 4. Great. Cool. Which he, was awesome. And apparently he, he listens to the show. Yes, that's the first thing he said. He goes, oh, I know you guys. And he goes, oh, JTI, I love you. That's no, cr- he didn't say that. No, <laughs> no. I, heard, I, heard that, awesome. no I heard that part, and Josh goes, I'm from the Schmozo podcast. He's like, yeah, I know. He's yeah. like, you know, he's like, I listen. I listen to you guys. So no, that's great. Super nice guy. He was there with writer, I believe, Tom Conway or something like that. And just super nice guy, and he was talking about he was there for safety, not guaranteed, which yeah. is a film he did, which is like a low budget sci fi yep. kind of film, mm-hmm. yep. which I was a huge fan of. It was one of my top ten films of last year, and Makuga loved it too. So he was saying how this is like a, our last stop for that film. Yeah. After this, we're going straight into Jurassic Park territory, and he was great. And I can't wait for you guys to see the video. He, he cool. drops little hints and a little bit of news on uh, about Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Great. Just gives you a little, you know, a little idea what the story is going to be. Where's Jeff Goldblum coming back? Where can, where can we get back? the uh, the rest of your nine favorite movies to 2012? I'm just kidding. Uh, What's our next story? <laughs> yeah, the napkin in a bar somewhere. All right. So the Saturn Awards. So, all right. <laughs> so we're going to be. We'll be we putting the footage up really soon. Uh, thank you, Josh yeah, Intern. No well done, you. sir. Yeah, well done. A story of hope, loss, and redemption. The red carpet at the Saturn Awards. All right. So let's. So again, so we've got about we have about ten minutes or so before we got to go. I want to talk to Riley a little more about yeah. before we're going. So, what what movies are you looking forward to in the next couple of weeks, months that you really want to see? Pacific Rim. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. I feel like that's going to make my summer. Mm-hmm. Um, giant robots, giant monsters, Godzilla, Mecha, Godzilla, whatever it is, I want it. Yeah. I want it. I and want I, it now. I said from the start of summer, there's movies I'm <sighs> putting my hopes on, like Iron Man three and Superman. But yep. if you held a gun to my head and you said you could only see one movie. This summer, oh, it. it's Pacific Rim, man. As soon as I saw that WonderCon footage, I was like, I get exactly well, what this movie wants to do. And the thing do. is, too, it's like, I feel like you have, I mean, we've all seen the trailers and stuff, but it hasn't been so overhyped. Like, we didn't get yeah. mm-hmm. um, a trailer, like, last year. Well, we probably did. But um, We haven't had just, a new one, like, every week. It, yeah, it yeah. hasn't <laughs> been, like, just a barrage of Pacific Rim, Pacific Rim, Pacific Rim. Um, so I'm just really excited. It's Guillermo, Guillermo. Yeah. I mean, he... He cares about the stuff he does. Now, he does. Your ex, but back again, boyfriend Bobby Finstock. He and I <laughs> were like, talking. I don't even know what you're talking. He about and him. I were talking on the phone before, and and because I saw one of his insane tweets, and he says oh, that Pacific Rim is going to be the biggest bomb in Warner yeah. Brothers history. And I yeah. said, and the first thing I said to him was, "You obviously don't know the story behind Pluto Nash that cost 110 million and made <laughs> 1.7 million. It cost a lot of Hillarys to make that movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, no one? No one? so I got it. So <laughs> so they. So this movie, the, here, here's the reason Pacific Rim is, apparently it's tracking bad, which really? means, for people who don't know out there, that the studios take it. Tracking lower than Grown Ups 2. Is that true? Well, that, that, that's a sequel. No. Grown yeah, Ups 2 opens the same weekend, story. and it's got a lot of built-in names, and Pacific Rim, I, Okay, if wait, you, but explain to people what does tracking mean. Tracking is when, it, when stu- what's that? It's the four quad thing, right? It's the quads. Yeah, yeah. And, but the studio's busy. <laughs> The simple version of it is studios just take take an inkling of, of numbers and, and, and figure out exactly how they think audience dollars are going to be spent, mm-hmm. and, and they figure it out that way. So they call it, they call it tracking. So I think tracking is bullshit. Mm-hmm. I think that it doesn't matter. I think that um, sometimes studio executives are people who sit around and go, well, you know, this movie didn't do this. And you don't know. You don't know who's spending the dollars. There's mm-hmm. hype behind this movie. If you I, tell people on the street that Grown Ups 2 and Pacific Rim are coming out, people still are going to have the reaction. They're like, oh, what's Pacific Rim? Right. If they knew what it was, yeah. they'd probably want to see that. But look, these are the two movies that are coming out the weekend after 4th of July. I wouldn't even know if people want to see movies after The Lone Ranger comes out. I they wish, may just give up I, on the art form. I don't understand why Pacific Rim didn't come out, honestly, 4th of July weekend. I wish that it did. I well, think because it probably because be Disney, yeah. you know, Disney got the date. They probably fought over the date, yeah. and it's a bigger property, and it's Johnny Depp, so they win. Um, but but the thing is that Pacific Rim, <laughs> Pacific Rim is going to be one of those movies. If it delivers, I think it will. People are going to talk about it. People yeah. are going to say, "Dude, there's a big ass." robot fighting a big ass monster and they break buildings well, and that's yeah. all we've yeah. seen yeah. which i'm like and i also feel like because it's guillermo del toro and you also have act like i really like charlie hunnam i think he's a great actor i love sons of anarchy so i'm like i feel like you're putting people in this that there's potential that we don't really know what the story is yeah that we're actually going to get story mixed in with all that awesomeness i, th- I think so and our buddy navid mclarge saw it the other day saw pacific rim yeah uh and liked it 
He liked it. He said it's a fun movie. And he liked it. He That's li- not. Well, he uh, he th- his problem. But is that his, his bag? His problem. No, it is his bag. He, Naveed's got I'm the saying same, that kind of movie. Yeah. Though. Naveed has Naveed has our our tastes in movies. Here here's here's what he said yesterday. He said it was good fun, but for me, all these movies start to feel like the same thing. They have the same plot, and for me, it felt like almost like the same ending as like a Marvel movie. Um, I just want to see something that feels like King Kong. I didn't want to reference Godzilla which one yeah. because I didn't want to spoil it. Look real. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe no! it's nice to have something that's not so hopeful. Like Iron Man had to further the franchise, and Superman has to reboot the franchise. Let's just see two huge things yeah. beat the fuck out yeah. of each other. And it's Guillermo del Toro. It's not. Yeah. It's not the Michael Bay thing where there's yeah. going to be. You know, I can't help but the scenes where you it's see not in Pearl the Harbor. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. When you see them in the trailer and they're in the like, I don't know what the heck they're called, but where they're like doing what the suits are doing, yeah. and they do it in unison. I'm like, that's so cool. They're like <laughs> hyperlinked yeah. in their minds. Yeah. It could be fun. Exact so, same thing. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It'd be a guys. fun Olympic event, and I, synchronized anything needs a boost. Synchronized robots. Yeah. Yes. I, I want to pilot one of those. Hell exactly. yeah. And I think that's the thing, though, is that once people, you come out of it and you go, that movie was cool. What was it? I didn't really know about it. Go see it. It's the movie of the summer. Maybe, maybe not. You might not be saying that, but I think that you, it's got, it, I don't think it's going to bomb, and I certainly don't think it's going to bomb overseas, because I think, and, and you know, and it, I think it's going to do great. Like in Japan, it's going to oh, yeah. kill in Japan. Pacific yeah. Rim, uh, I bet you it does better than Grown Ups 2 in weekend number two. You know, I bet you everybody who wants to see Grown Ups 2 is going to see it that weekend. It's and then Pacific though. Rim so, 2. I'm sorry, who is. How, people don't. People, Adam Sandler movies, just, man. People, it's it's like an anomaly. How it's an anomaly. Does that happen? It's an anomaly. People still go to see. What have I said before? Big Bang Theory is loved nationwide. Yeah, it's Big a Bang horrible is, show. Oh, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Uh, if you're, no. really if you're like a geek show. or a nerd and you get the references, you love it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, but she also, just told you. Well, it's, here's it's, the thing, and then Middle America, who loves it, it loves it is. because of the characters. They yeah. don't, mm-hmm. they don't give a crap about everything yeah. else that's going on. But you take the laugh track out of that, that show ain't funny. <laughs> it's true. Right. It's true. Um, so again, so I, so Pacific Rim is definitely. It looks like everybody's uh, list here. I think that's going to be a tough marketing tie-in, though. Like, how do you sell burgers with Pacific Rim? Like, try our, try yeah. our McFish <laughs> from the Pacific. <laughs> it's going to be gross. From th- the Pacific Rim. It, it, it's a lot of cars, a lot of car commercials. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. I think that that one's for me is definitely one, but Elysium's my next one. Yeah, I'm well, really uh, looking yeah. forward to Elysium. Yeah, uh, Elysium is just, it what? looks like that movie where I'm gonna like it, but I'm gonna have to like really just turn your brain on. In. No, you've got to turn yeah. your brain on. Yeah. That's what I, let's, I'm done you're with gonna the, get. I feel like you're gonna get the turn your brain off action. Not in a bad way in Pacific Rim, yeah, and I'm then saying. Elysium is the like. That's what I'm and saying. Keep it off for grown ups too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't on. even take your brain out. Yeah, open my it. eyes for that. Yeah. All right, so guys, we had a really fun show tonight. Riley of Vanderbilt here. Thank you so much Thank you for, for joining us. So oh, you can. You- yeah, was I was going to say, oh. you can see us both on a panel at Comic-Con. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're doing a co- uh, yep. comics. On, it's I Don't Know Shit About Comics. <laughs> that's yeah. what it's called. It's Jesse Snyder, oh. and I think we should have been on that Thursday. One. Yeah. Thursday, yeah. Thursday night. Yeah, at 8. Uh, okay, so that, again, we're talking about Comic Con. Mark and I will also be at Comic Con. It yeah. looks like Mark Riley and Ken Knapsack will also be with the us at Comic Con. We're going to be there, and so again, <laughs> make sure you check out Tiffany and Riley on the the panel. We'll be more. She'll tweet it out. We'll put it on the website where she is and where they both are, and yeah, also your follow. Handle is just your name at right? Riley. My first name, yeah. Yeah, R-I- at- L-E-A-H. Nice. And at Tiffany's tweets, and you can also check out Stacked. We'll be back this Saturday. Yes. Yes. Okay. So at uh, at Tiffany's tweets, schmoesno.com, and you can also youtube.com slash schmoesno for Tiffany. A couple things, announcements for next week. We are off. There is no show on July 4th. Barbecuing. Yeah, we're going to be barbecuing. I'm going to so, watch Independence Day. Crank the yeah. Van Halen and get a Coors Light. It's celebrating America. That's right. You can watch a couple. You can watch <laughs> some older tap. shows if you want to just go in the Motor Toad Cross. Hop. Go to the Toad Hop archives. Check out the shows there. Um, little no, side note here. Katie Sackhoff didn't win last night. She won in 2006. Um, I so, was going to say. <laughs> I, was like, uh, so, so, I, I, I just went along with that. Like, maybe I missed something. Yeah. I don't no, know. You, you should, I'm not going to say Leanne anything. tweeted that she won, and then she wrote, oh, it was 2006. Uh, and Ray Lee was sending back her broiled chicken when yeah, Katie said Yeah, I must have been in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I, I you, don't yeah, know. You should have definitely called, yeah, it, you should, you should have called me out on that. Um, so, again, and finally, 
Last week, we debuted the Knapsack Files uh, right after this show, and it was it's Ken Knapsack's show to where he talks to people, his friends around the uh, around the globe, if you will, and they yeah. talk personal stories. Last week, I was on, and now apparently the second part where I talk just about the schmoes, how we started, all the schmoes stuff. I talk about the show and everything that we're doing. If you want to hear more about the schmoes and all that stuff, you <laughs> listen Mark here. looks really nervous. Well, yeah. I'd like yeah. to apologize ahead of time. I, will, I was re-editing the show, and I left it in, but I did say, Mark Ellis at one point I didn't find him funny in 2003 so I'll be in Vegas yeah. this weekend doing stand-up comedy yeah. to prove Ken Napsack wrong South yeah. Yeah. Casino everybody. yeah I t- I actually, I'm I taking just, that out of context yeah. but yeah. you listen I, to it I say some nice things about Ellis so if you want to check I can't wait to hear that you can check out right, ap- right after this show just keep tuning in listen to the Napsack file starting really quick but again, guys, we'll see you on July 11th. Schmoes No Podcast, Tiffany Tweets, Raleigh Vanderbilt, Mark Ellis, Christian Harloff, the whole Schmoes crew. Bye-bye, the kid. Thank you, the kid, for being Brando. here. So long. Johnny Ice, take us out, man.